to participate in a Don and Mike show contest? How about this? You or a member of your household can only win once for 60 days. You must comply with any age limitations for each contest. For complete contest rules, send a self address stamp envelope to the mighty WJFK, PO Box 3649, Washington, D.C., 2007. Thank you, and God bless. Everybody loves Don and Mike. Oh, this is inadvertent. It's never inadvertent, Don. Say hail to the Redskins, everybody. Yeah. Obviously, the wrong music pad loaded into the computer. What is it? Hail to the Redskins. Mike's doing something with his microphone right now. His microphone's not operating, I predict. If he could, he'd say something angry about Wendell Hall. <laughs> and the stage is set here at 10 at Hendrick Main Street. Hi, I'm back. I'm back. Good job. Uh, I'm back. Hi, you all. Welcome. It's Michael Barrell versus the equipment. Yes, Who will great. win uh, today? Uh, you know, engineers are wonderful. They just don't understand about microphone cables and that certain disc jockeys need to move them around and have flexibility. But that's okay because now I have fixed it. Mike. And it is good to go for the show, show, show. Mike? Yes, Don. Hey, now? No. Um. Hello. Oh, hello, Mr. President Bush has promised to demolish that awful Iraqi prison. He says it will be dismantled one naked, hooded Iraqi at a time. Excellent. I believe in miracles. Mr. Shannon. Nice. Hello, Mr. Drysdale. That's Milburn Drysdale. He's Joseph positively wonderful. I believe in miracles. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, got one, a, a fast one. Do another. Okay, I'll right twist my arm. <laughs> Please. Okay. Please do. You bastard. Yay, you always make me do this. Always. You always do. Kids who watch... Hello. Hello there, Mr. Shannon. Kids who watch movies showing alcohol use are more likely to try drinking. Oh, no, hey, now. Wrong one. Yeah, no, you were right, Mike. I was wrong. Hey, the right, wrong one. Hey, now. Good instinct, though. Hey, now. Good instinct, Mark. What? Where are we? Because you heard this. And you thought the show was starting, and I, hey meant, I meant to hit that. Ah. Oh, I yeah. like that. That's entirely different. Right. Ay, ay, ay. Yeesh. Kids who watch movies showing uh, alcohol use are more likely to try drinking. <laughs> Whoa. Well, then. My kid ain't going to be watching Queer as Folk no more, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Do another one. Hey now. Thank you. Hold on. Hold on. Give me a second. Mike again. Hey now. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877 365 3636. They're ready. And let's see. You know who enjoys those jokes every day? Yeah. I do. Uh, does. But keep her away from those evil men. Yeah. They like the jokes too. Well, I don't care. Yeah. I know. All of your uncles. Based on a true story. Uncle. He was a neo-Nazi. <laughs> okay. With one true enemy. Himself. A man of faith. A man of hate. And a soul torn apart. Viewer discretion advised. Must beware. a fine joke. And good afternoon, Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Farrell K. Farrell K. All right, the DJ Farrell K. Hey. And all the ships at sea. They scream when the jewel is covered but in molten copper. Bravo <laughs> and Mike O'Mara. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, right, we're back. I thought, you Ignore that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ignore the mic. Well, stand again. Thank you very Thank you. much. I was standing up. Hello. Why did you do that to me? I didn't. Why did I do? Why did this board do that to you? You opened the door and pushed me out the door, and then I was outside. And you were still inside. The other thing before, I'll take. I'll, I'll take the blame for that. Right? For hitting the do 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 do. Right. But it should have been. Bom, 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 bom. The door. Well, it's my belief, Mr. Shannon, that any time someone hits the door, someone should be left outside. Uh, Don and Mike show. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi. It's a, uh, a new episode on this Wednesday. 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 05-26-04. <laughs> Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. 
Are you still Mr. Drysdale? Uh, I'll be whatever you want me to be. <laughs> I'll be, but I don't want to be. What are you no, no, doing? No. I thought I was letting Mr. Drysdale back oh, out. Man, you were letting me out. You didn't identify me as Mr. Drysdale. I'm I just, you out. went, oh. you, you went, uh, uh, hello, so hello. You went yeah, Mr. Drysdale voice. That's because I was choking on my drink before. Hey. Come back. No, it's good to be uh, back in here because it, just the timing was a little off, right. and so I was drinking. The door, door was placed but accidentally. I was drinking a non-alcoholic beverage. Yes, the, and, and that'll change shortly. <laughs> the, uh, the door was opened uh, accidentally. Uh, by the Columbia School of Broadcasting. Yes, let me just tell you, all, all of the things that I would like to talk about on today's show. <laughs> this okay. you should not do. <laughs> I'm not an animal. Here you go. I'm not Michael. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for this. Yes. I love my lists. Oh, I know. Nobody loves a list like you do. Okay. In no particular, well, no, in a particular order. Let me just tell you, just for the opening break, yes. I want to talk about American Idol. I want to talk about 24. I want to talk about the local TV coverage of the tornado and how it was only covered on all the stations except the one that had uh, American Idol. Mm -hmm. I want to ask Buzz about the accident involving his wife falling yeah. off falling off a ladder. That's right. Want to play the want to play the tape. Really? Yeah, an want to play the tape of uh, Joe back in 1987 very wasted uh, 17 years ago when the cicadas came out. Look we, at me surrounded by the little yeah. bugs with red and blue eyes. We have that tape <laughs> yeah. also from yesterday's program. We have a, a follow over oh, okay. to the controversy about the ad for the disc jockeys and the lying general manager. Would that be a follow over mm. or a follow up? Uh, a fo well, a follow up. Follow okay. Uh, well, yeah, a follow up because we, we left it. Yeah, but it'll be a follow up. We, mm -hmm. we left it open yesterday, and, and, and it may not be closed today. Really? Mm. It, may, it may not be closed today. Rob, who, believe it or not, always tries to look on the bright side. I know. Of the, really, he does, for being such a hateful guy, mm -hmm. I'll say this in real life, he does give people the benefit of the doubt way too often. I mean, we were discussing this up in the office before the show, and, he, and he's like saying to me, You know, I think Cameron, the program director, really probably is innocent in all of this. I'm inclined to agree with you. I, I do too. I think he is. Technically. Now, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. wait. in the middle of it. No, 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 no. I, I don't like the word innocent. Well, what I like is the fact that technically he's probably not fibbing. Mm -hmm. That's as far as I want to go with it. Mm -hmm. I think, okay, I think once, I think somebody. Which is like if I, mm, let's say I killed Buzz mm -hmm. and just didn't tell you, but you, hold up, but you kind of knew, but I said to you, hey, Buzz is dead. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, but I didn't say to you I killed Buzz, but you knew I killed Buzz? Well, here's where the sticky wicket. I happen to remember what was said by our general manager yesterday. And I, what our general manager said yesterday was that no one in the company placed an ad. Well, mm. that's well, what he said. Hold on. As I mentioned, there are many things to discuss. Let's start with Buzz. And let's ask Buzz. All right. As long as we're on the topic, and I, and I threw that out, well, what if I was to say to you that I had killed Buzz, you know, mm -hmm. where Buzz was dead? Mm -hmm. hey, I ask you, what would you think if your buddy comes into work and says that he's, he's very upset. Mm -hmm. that his I'd, wife, his, I'd think one thing and one thing only. What? Cameron did it. His, uh, <laughs> his wife has had an, and I use the, the Dr. Evil quote, an accident. An accident uh -huh. in the home. Yeah. That's right. Working yeah. near Buzz. Yeah. And Buzz her, was riding a tricycle. <laughs> she was changing a light bulb on the balcony, and she fell over the banister just like in the omen <laughs> well that's kind of what happened right buzz a little close yeah. i mean we would, we'd like your testimony now let me just say here in the uh, rob spiewak kangaroo court mm -hmm. yes where every man is of course innocent until his wife uh, comes out with a videotape proving that he's guilty right mm -hmm. let me say that i do believe that uh buzz had nothing to do that's with, right. with marcia falling Fracturing her wrist. Oh my God! And and what, what banging her head? Yeah, she hit her head, but she, you know, a minor fractured wrist. You know, nothing serious. She's going to be all right. Minor fracture. Yeah. Not a compound fracture. No. No, no bone poking through the skin. Yeah, more of a hairline fracture. Exactly what but happened. She's in a buddy. cast and will be for the next four weeks. I, you know, I, 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 I didn't push her off the ladder. I can tell you that. And what was she doing to be on the I ladder didn't, in I the didn't, first place? I didn't rig the ladder in any way. Now, while you're defending yourself uh, <laughs> a little too strongly, I might ask, <laughs> could you tell us what she was doing on the ladder in the first place? I, that's a very good question. Because was she really, the ladder as a mode of escape? There, no, no, she was not. Uh, there really was no reason for her to be on the ladder as near as... So she would determine. not have been uh, making an attempt, say, to get out of a well? 
No, no, there was no well. Where was the ladder, Mm -hmm. Buzz? Uh, The ladder was uh, in my screen porch, on my screen porch. Mm-hmm. Had, screen port- had you had you been on the ladder before your I, wife? I had been on the ladder, yes, and a friend of a friend who was helping me install. The and then you left camera. said ladder. Uh, I did, I did, and I. And went- then your wife innocently stepped on said ladder, said ladder, and had said quote unquote Doctor Evil accident. That that is correct. Was she involved with the uh, putting in the installing of the ceiling fan? No, not uh, not directly. No, and uh, really, uh, again, uh, no particular reason for her to be on the. Would ladder. she have been uh, going up the ladder to take a look at the ceiling? Exactly, fan? Mike. She, I think, mm-hmm. she wanted to examine the work and see what was being done. So, a uh, curiosity fractured the wrist. Yes. Ah. True. Well said. Mm-hmm. True or not, though, Buzz, yeah. and I must speak out for your wife and uh, for all battered women out yes. there. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> True or not, uh-huh. you consider yourself to be a Bob Vila type. You're a do-it-all yeah, at the house. I'm pretty handy with most and, things. And uh, if, if you've been working on something like installing a ceiling fan mm-hmm. and you, you knock off to go out in the backyard and have a camel and have a right. have an ice, an ice-cold Miller Lite, uh-huh. right. uh, are you bothered when your wife goes up to check on your work? Uh, uh, well, sure, I think anybody's made a little nervous by that fact. by being, And because you know, of that, Buzz, would it surprise you if I told you mm-hmm. that the Donnie CSI, the DCSIs, were over there moments ago and found Vaseline. on the ladder, steps, petroleum jelly? Vaseline! Well, that was from an earlier party. Uh, it's possible <laughs> that that was there. Yeah. Would uh, uh, I have another series of questions here. Uh-huh. Would she have been checking your handiwork when she got on the ladder? Well, possibly. Would possibly. the job or the, the work of, there, my, of my friend? Is there a chance that the job was probably completed satisfactorily, but she did not necessarily believe it? Uh, you know, I don't know. I thought the job was progressing nicely. It wasn't finished. Uh, it was midway through the project that this. Well, what was occurred. she doing up there, Mr. Burbank? I, I think it's a very exactly. direct question. Yes, exactly. Mike. Yes or no? What was she doing up there? Yes or no? Yes. Rob, were you proud of the job you did, Buzz? Uh, very, very proud. You were proud of your handiwork, aren't you, Buzz? Uh, always. Yeah. Do you invite or insist that she examine the handiwork? I, if she did, she did this in her own mind. She, she never not, mentioned that she should take a look at it. Sidebar uh, mm-hmm. for all the listeners now: uh, they should know that Buzz is sitting on one side of the room, and Don, Rob, and myself, we are all behind a big oak desk, all wearing powdered wigs. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, I'm in the witness box. And as far as me, I'm commando uh-huh. underneath his robe. <laughs> This whole court is commando. Commando, and I love it. I'm 18, and I like it. <laughs> and Mike spit out his water. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Yeah. Buzz, when your wife took this unfortunate tumble. Uh-huh. <laughs> the nasty spill. Well, however you like to call it. Uh-huh. Whatever queer name you've given it. Uh-huh. How long was your wife... Uh, 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 Are you going to ask about how, how long it took for him to offer assistance? Well, I, I'd like to know how long she... Uh, was she... Incapacity. I mean, was she, was she, w- when you came home, was she like Woody in Toy Story? I mean, was she just <laughs> laying on, she, on the ground or, or was she okay when you, when, you, when, and, and incidentally, after you set this trap for your wife, where did you go? Uh, I went inside for a moment. I, I think it was something to do with the wiring. I think I had to work on a fixture. Oh, just one moment. Inside. You were on the premises when this accident occurred? Yes, I was. This happened last evening? Yes, it did. You were there? I was at the house, yes. Oh, okay. Interesting. Can you okay. estimate the length of time she was unconscious? Uh, I don't know if she was unconscious or for how long. I I watched her lay there for several moments, uh, you know, panicked, uh, paralyzed with fear. Mr. How, Burbank, if how she how had many, chosen to offer assistance, could she in fact have not fractured her wrist? I no. I think the damage had already been done. It was a question. So you say, Mr. Burbank? I have a question. Yes, yes, sir. You mentioned that you you came and you saw your wife as Woody in Toy Story on uh-huh. the floor. You looked at her for a, a, a few moments. Was yeah. that the testimony? Yes, it was. Uh, yeah. A few moments could mean exactly that. A few moments or in such a severe shock to your system. Could it, in fact, have been 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 minutes? I, I yes lost or no. All yes track of no. time. It, yes anything's no. possible, yes. Anything's possible. And uh, isn't it true that the extent of her injuries were probably... Would probably warrant medevacking her by helicopter from your home, or at least putting her into your late model European-made car to drive her to the nearby emergency room. And isn't it true was... that you did nothing of the kind? Isn't it true, in fact, Mr. Burbank? That is true. Yes, I did nothing of the kind. <laughs> you really didn't? No. <laughs> you didn't take her to the hospital after she was well, see, first day. You, you came in and your wife had fallen off a ladder and was laying on the ground, like, yeah, like a bro- like a broken doll, right? And you didn't scoop her up into your did big you family arms. Any, did you administer no. any first aid when she? No. Were there no, any contusions? Uh, she did hit her head. And was there blood? 
Uh, no, no blood. You know, lack, no of blood. Medi- lack of medical attention is, is what killed Danny Thomas. But lack of blood in this particular circumstance would uh, mean internal bleeding. And but, one other question. Is yes. there an insurance policy on her? Of course there is. There is. Yeah. is uh, isn't it true that, in fact, that insurance policy uh, exceeds the value of your very own? And may I? I don't know the exact Isn't value. Isn't it true, Mr. Frank, that your wife is worth more to you dead than alive? May I follow I, up? I don't know. Mike, may I? May I? Uh, Please do. May I take a, a couple of minutes go of ahead. time? Go ahead, Counselor. I yield to the fine gentleman from Virginia. Is it not true that after discovering your wife, looking at her mm-hmm. for a period of time, several moments, before deciding that you would not take her to the hospital, uh-huh. <laughs> is, is it true or not true that you then bundled her up this morning? And sent her off to her job. I now, her up. now wrapped her in blankets to prepare her for the now, 86 degree. Except, also, except for the bundling part, that's true. Now, sent her out on the street, dazed, confused. Also, is it not true? Please, please be correcting me if I'm incorrect. Uh-huh. But is it not true that your wife works in a physician's office? That is true. Yes, yes. that is true, Mr. Burbank. You know how I know that? How? Because I also go to that very same doctor's ah, office. Isn't there a conflict ah, of interest? He is there? a wonderful doctor, a fine physician. Yes, he is. And I say to you... Is this a conflict of interest? Do you have to step down because you go to that no, doctor? No, I do not. But oh, here's I, my I point. I say you must recuse no, yourself. No, if you would simply give me... If you would simply... Give, let let me say this. Material. I will let you... I will the let the fact you that I have also gone to this doctor for my many ailments... Uh-huh. Uh, it has nothing to do with the story. Let me just point out that when he bundled her up, mm-hmm. pushed her in the car, didn't bundle, pushed her foot on the gas pedal and said, go to work, I don't care how you feel, uh-huh. he sent her to a doctor's office where she works. And you know the first thing they did when she walked in? What is that? They said, Marsha, what is wrong with your wrist? You need an x-ray mm-hmm. yesterday. Oh, really? And it was only then that they discovered the, the break? That's true. Yes, that is correct. Now, Buzz, if your wife had had a job at, at Kmart, uh-huh. if she had had a, a, a job at Ames, if she was lucky enough, like my wife, to be working at Walmart, if she'd worked in any nail salon in the Northern Virginia area, you know, uh-huh. you yes. wouldn't have gotten that type of treatment. It's just dumb luck that your wife works in a doctor's office. That yes, is and that's, true. that's the yeah. only thing that otherwise she would have probably had permanent. Uh, Disfigurement. She may have been like that guy on 24 last night. Isn't it true? May have had to have taken the entire... May have had to Dennis Murphy. Mm -hmm. Isn't it true, Mr. Burbank, that your poor, sweet, petite wife is very small and very fragile, and in fact, any fall from any length would have caused bone damage? I'm aware of that, yes. Yet you chose... To let her stay in the home all night without medical attention, didn't you? She said she was fine, yes. Never took one single measure to guard her frailty. You didn't provide her with a splint? No, I was I was just nice. stunned. You didn't make any attempt to suck the poison out? Plus, I, I needed to finish the project, so... Is the project finished? Yes, it is. Yeah, the project. You know what the real yeah, project yeah, is? The project isn't totally finished yet. That's right. He didn't complete that project. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. I, I can only conclude one thing. Yes? Uh, he's guilty. He's as guilty as a man can be. I agree. I do too. I'm not sure what the charge is. O.J. Burbank. Uh, yes. That's what I say. Honey, climb up to the top of the ladder. <laughs> no, first, I was just stunned, and then I waited for her to regain consciousness. And uh, <laughs> when she did, I, I assumed now, everything was fine. Now, now, really, no kidding. When you waited for her to regain consciousness, uh-huh. seri- now, seriously, did you, like, give her the... Honey, wake up. No, I, I, I as I recall, I, I stood over her and, and leaned forward, uh, peering to see if she was okay. Ah. Just peering. Did you hear her phone? Uh, yeah, I think I, yeah, I heard something. You think? I, I heard something and I, I went running, of you course. You heard something. I what, immediately went running. What's the first thing you checked when you saw her laying there lifeless? Uh, I checked for emotion. I just looked to see if she was moving. Oh, emotion as opposed to emotion. No, yeah. You thought you wanted any, like, any emotion. Oh, I smiling, was... laughing. I thought he said emotion, too. No, and then he no. said I checked to see if she, if she was moving. Did I checked check for emotion. She was breathing? Uh, not directly, no. Wow. Hmm. Uh. He's like that lifeguard we had on the other day. Once, uh, did you check the neck pulse? No, right. there was no need for that. Mirror? Because... Hold on. By the time I'd absorbed what had happened and saw that she was moving, I, I felt no need. By the time, by the time you'd absorbed it. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, she absorbs the blow of the uh, of the floor. Unfortunately, yes. It's concrete floor on your on your sunroom. Yeah. yeah. Mike, mm-hmm. time for us to get to the bottom of this. Yes, absolutely. This number will work. Hello. Marsha, it's Don and Mike. Hi. 
Hi. Hi. Marsha, how are you? I, have, I should turn down my radio. You yeah, think? we are so concerned now listen, about listen, you. Listen, dear friend. Where are you, dear friend? Well, now... Marsha, now... Yeah. Listen, dear friend. Yes. When I called your house on my way to work today... Uh-huh. And I asked where your husband was because he had, he had left me a message. Yes. And we had our little, hi, how you doing? And, and, I, and he said, you said, no, he doesn't. How come you didn't tell me that he had just assaulted you last night? Oh, no, he didn't assault me. So he, did, was there any slippery <laughs> substance at the top of the ladder, Marcia? Anything that would have caused you to lose your footing? I wasn't all the way to the top of the ladder. You weren't to the top no. of the I ladder. I went up to see the holes that were being drilled, and I was coming back down the ladder, backing down, and I thought I was on the bottom, and I wasn't. Dear girl, do you have any idea how long you may have been laying there unconscious? I wasn't unconscious. Uh, how long did he just stand over you, staring at you? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I hit yeah. my head and, and my wrist hurt. And Lost I, and She's said, not thinking clearly. Lost he said, are you okay? And I said, just give me a minute, I'm fine. And, and were you, ex obviously, with a hairline fracture of your wrist, you were in excruciating pain. Why? And, and why would he not let you? Why would he not let you seek uh, the medical attention that you so badly needed? You know, I really wasn't in that much pain, and I still am not. Before you made the climb up the ladder, Marcia, did yes. he offer you a cold drink or something to eat that he had prepared? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The friend, yeah. the friend who was there, yeah. Rocco. May I, yes, the, right, we, use Rocco. The, we use the name Rocco. Uh, that's the reason we're calling Buzz Old Lace today. Uh, uh. <laughs> so when uh. When Rocco, let me just, would there be any chance that while you were laying there in your most vulnerable, you know, uh, lights out, right? For, you know, what, as, as far as you could have known, could have been hours. Sure. How do you know that there, that there wasn't a Rocco party happening there? No, I wasn't out. You were not out. I know. You were not out, but you do have a, a fractured wrist. I do. You do, and you do have a bump on your head. Uh, I hit. I remember hearing me hit my head, yeah, but, but there's heard. there's no bump and I have no uh, tender spot. Marsha, yes. this is Mike. Hi. I'm going to tell you something right now that might come as a shock to you. All right. Fact of the matter is, Marsha, that when you took that tumble from the ladder, even though you're unaware of it, mm -hmm. you have been asleep for 14 days. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. You. You're welcome. We're concerned about you. You know, we care about you. I know you do. Well, they you... made me come home from work. They said I shouldn't be working. Well, of course, because as luck would have it, you work at a doctor's office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank as luck. God. As luck because if that hadn't happened, she might not be with us today. Whatever. Uh, probably the way it <laughs> swelled overnight, I would have gone to an emergency room to see about it. Yeah, you would have gone. You would have struggled to drive that car with one hand. <laughs> Meanwhile, while the uh, the unconcerned king of the hill over here. <laughs> uh, and you the... know, it is tough to drive a stick shift with... Uh, oh, my God. You made her drive a stick shift with her broken wrist? It was her choice to get the standard transmission. Oh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we hope you feel better, Marcia. As long as you're okay. Well, you know, the toughest part is getting dressed. Really? And, and, mm -hmm. and the, the holes that you went out to check out, they, they were okay? I was just curious to mm -hmm. see what it was. Right, and the, they were fine? They met yeah. your standards? Everything works fine. Well, thank God that uh, it's easy to slip into those simple house dresses that he keeps you in. <laughs> <laughs> those, well, we hope those potato sacks. Those potato I'm thinking sacks. about just wearing underwear and buttoning up my lab coat and just not bothering. <laughs> hey, that'd be okay. Now, yeah. now you're turning me on. Okay. business has increased. That's <laughs> different than any other day. Oh. Marsha, we all hope you feel better, and for Christ's sake, watch your back. <laughs> yes, I promise. All right. Good answers, babe, and be careful on the stairs. I okay. will. All right. Bye, Marsha. Bye. There she okay. goes. Okay, Buzz. You, you heard me warn her about the stairs. I like it, Monty Python. You heartless bastard. <laughs> you really, I, really should watch those stairs. I. Are you okay? Uh, show me a sign of emotion. <laughs> no, emotion. 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 Show me emotion. Not now. Not even a twitch. Now. Can you can you wiggle your finger? Uh, I don't see that. I've won. <laughs> you ought to come over and see the ceiling fan. It works great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Buzz. Fantastic. Buzz, man. Buzz, Buzz. Uh, okay. That's Buzz. Yeah. That's Buzz. We love Buzz. And and, and I hope Marsh is feeling better. She's fine. Um... Last night, uh, in the D.C. area, we had a, a tornado warning. Yep. And, you know, lots of places around the country that we broadcast to get tornadoes all the time. I don't know how you guys handle it. In your, like in Wichita, mm -hmm. uh, in Dallas, when you get the tornadoes, I don't know if they break into panic mode. But Sam handled it very well last night. They do here. Mm -hmm. However, keep in mind that American Idol was on Channel 5, the Fox station. You didn't like Sam? 
I love Sam Polka. He's fantastic. <laughs> but here's the deal. On Channel 4, NBC, Channel 7, ABC, Channel 9, CBS. Because they know they're on against American Idol. Right, right. It's a tornado, and it's not really a... a it's, it's not a tornado. I mean, they, they have... What do a, they say? They say something. They though. said it was a thunderstorm that was in a, making circular motions. They, they, have, they have something. They have... It, ha, it is showing... Not, is it convection? Yeah. That is that, that what they're right? saying? Yeah. Like in an oven? Wh whatever it is. It, they're, they're, it's, you know, the, the, the storms are going in circles. They're twirling. And, and they're twirling, and they might turn into, into tornadoes. And, 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 and they were all around here. People have seen funnel clouds. So I'm not saying that this does or does not belong on, on primetime television. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is that uh, American Idol, the biggest show of the year, was on last night. Mm -hmm. And of our four major networks here in D.C., Three of them went to total storm coverage, right. while Channel 5, the station with American Idol, mm -hmm. <laughs> played American Idol, and for a while they did that thing, like, y you know how the screen gets on an NFL game when they show highlights? Mm -hmm. yeah, it kind of gets the, uh, the the little border around yeah. it, the shiny border around it. Yeah, and I've never understood that. Like, if you're going to run a crawl on the top of the screen or, right. or, or something, I don't, I don't know why it is that, that you compress it, and you're wasting the entire left side yeah, the screen with right. a useless graphic. So you can put the uh, the information up on the top. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they're doing this on Channel 5, the, 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 right. the Fox station. They're running American Idol. And then so they don't miss any commercials. Mm -hmm. As soon as, like, the, the dope says, okay, I'm Ryan Seacrest, we'll, we'll be right back. They cut to the Channel 5 weather lady, Sam Palka. And they give her maybe 10 seconds. Right. Now, all the other stations are doing wall-to-wall -wall coverage. She comes on and goes... Hi, I'm Sam Palka. There's a chance of a tornado. It might touch down in the Lord area. We've got the information on the top of the screen. Really don't call for American Island tonight. Tell the news on Fox. <laughs> Boom. That's it. Wow. Meanwhile, on the other stations, well, they've got their Super Doppler. and Let's they've got take their... a look at Prince George's County, and, shall we? <laughs> and i got to give the uh, the award last night. Goes to my man, Topper Shut. Yeah. What Topper do last night? My I didn't see Topper at all. Topper. WUSA Channel 9, the CBS station. I like Topper. I like it because he like, he's the only weatherman that says he likes it when it snows. Mm -hmm. He likes it when the weather's bad. Sure, because like, it gives him something to do. Yeah, he gets, he gets all turned on when the weather is bad. Sure. And last night as they were muddling through this thing from 8 till 9 o'clock, uh, I imagine most of the Washington area is like me. You'd watch American Idol. Then mm -hmm. During the commercial, you'd turn on one of the other stations to see about the weather, right? right. Exactly. Unless the weather happened to be right on top of you. you know, and We live in a big area with yeah. 5 million I was people. actually relying on Sam's brief updates uh, because it was not anywhere near me. So I turn on uh, Channel 9, and they're showing the maps, and you only hear his voice. And here's exactly what Topper shuts at 8.40 last night. Because so right now, as you can see, the storms are moving out of the La Plata area. Uh, they'll be moving up uh, Route 5, and it looks like these are not tornadoes. Uh, thank goodness for that. Uh, yes? Uh, okay. Right. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, folks, we know that uh, Navy NCIS is supposed to be on uh, right now. We feel that this is more important than running mm -hmm. uh, that show. Uh, uh, can I just... Uh, and it's obvious someone's talking to him in the ear because he goes, yeah, yes, yes. And uh, we have a license to protect here. So we are going to stay with this coverage. Uh, hey, way to go, Todd. Wow. Right. So, and it was a he great... He's right. He's, uh, technically, he's right. Mm -hmm. And it was a great behind-the-scenes moment that obviously sure. someone was screaming in his ear, okay, tell them that the dumb Navy NCIS show won't be on. Now, uh, uh, Topper, Topper, tell them that it's in the license, okay? We have to do it. <laughs> and it was Did you get funny. the impression that Topper maybe came up with that one on his own? No, because there, mm. was, there was enough pausing, right? Where you got we have a license to protect. That, that someone is feeding something into his ear. You know, and maybe it was one of those like where you're like an air traffic mm -hmm. controller where you've yeah. got a director telling you something and then somebody else telling you something in your ear. And then all of a sudden, like the, the overriding boss did you says, get the uh, Did you get the impression that they all have, at the same time, they've gotten recent new technology that they're very eager to use, which uh, pinpoints these storms? Yeah. I've never seen, and they all were doing it. They were all like narrowing it down almost to streets mm -hmm. where they could tell you where they thought they might have this uh, this it, convection. Like the worst this. piece of technology was on Channel 5 during their 10 o'clock news when Sam said, we can also show you where there was lightning. Oh, did and, you see that? And, and it looked <laughs> like it did. It had covered a map <laughs> right. of Virginia I with a yellow the crayon. Thing. They were sitting there, and what it shows is the, the after lightning hits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there were so many of them. That yeah. it was a big, just, giant smear. It's just one field of yellow. Yes. My wife is not a foul-mouthed lady, but she actually said, what the F? Hey, but you know, if we're talking about <laughs> Channel 5 here in Washington, yeah. uh -huh. 
Wilma Thomas. Did anybody see his macho street racing report? Did I? No. <laughs> These cars are tricked out. And he's got the big collar up, you know, sure. trying to make him look, really, like he's not in his usual dress. <laughs> this Honda Accord. Let's look at what it costs. Some of these kids spend up to $5,000 to trick up their machines. <laughs> these two mirrors on each side, $200 each. The thing on the back, $800. And then the big shot of him standing with his legs spread in the middle of the parking yeah. lot in the big Iron Man pose as they were right driving up. the cars up behind him. It's we, it's me, Wilma Thomas. Weren't they trying to... Make him more masculine by giving him that report, and it, yeah, it, it he, failed did, miserably. Did you tape that for me? <laughs> it was fantastic. Um, and American Idol, hold on, about the storm. Uh, Jeff, Don, and Mike. Hello, Jeff. Hey, Don. I heard uh, Topper last night, and he probably said that because I was the one calling uh, WUSA, and they kept hanging up. And and I sent them emails, and that's probably why somebody said something in the top. Are you uh, a big Navy CSI fan or yes, whatever? I am. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, they ended up replaying it at one thirty in the morning, mm -hmm. and didn't tell anybody. So of course my TiVo didn't tape it. But Don, I'm the opposite of you. I uh, I TiVo American Idol, then I watch Navy NCIS. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Topper's a dope. That's all I have to say. Right, and you're a winner. <laughs> you're a winner because you watch Navy and, and, and CSI and, and, and TiVo American Idol. Get out of here, you Hey, dope. Topper has a legitimate issue, though, because mm -hmm. when you're really, when you're talking about TV stations and local, that's it for a lot of people. And if you are mm -hmm. in Alexandria and they don't tell you that they know a tornado's coming, they can lose their license. Mm -hmm. But on one end, you can do it like Channel 5, though. You absolutely can. They're, right. they're, they're covered, too. You can yeah. run the show and still do the stuff. You, you can sure. do it that way. Hello, uh, Norman. Hey, Donna Mike. Howdy. Hey, uh, yeah, I just was talking, uh, think about the, uh, Channel 5 yesterday. I'm a big Simpsons fan, and around 6 o'clock they actually started covering the, uh, the storm there. And they break in like every five minutes. So you got like two minutes of episode. Five minutes of commercials, and then five minutes oh. of this. Why am I only over. getting two minutes of episodes? <laughs> I'm only getting two minutes of episodes. Here's the other thing I noticed: that once American Idol was over and 24 started, right. my stories. They're still they're still doing this thing where the the screen is like one quarter of the size yes. that it's supposed to be because they've got all the maps and all the warnings here, here and, in Northern Virginia, or as we like to call it, Tornado Alley. And uh, and you'd be watching 24 and go, God, it's like watching it on a 12 inch screen. That's true. And then all of a sudden. They would lift all the stuff. All, all, all of the maps and everything would be gone, mm -hmm. and you go, oh, great, it's back to regular. And you know why all the stuff is gone? Because they're going to commercials. That's sure. Because right. they got to get the commercials on. Yeah, they, and they, they have to have a full screen for the commercials. And God, now, we've got a lot to talk. we we, we got a break. I told you we've got a lot to get to today. We've not even gotten to the conspiracy about uh, Alan and Cameron and, right. and the DJ uh, ad and mm. Joe's uh, cicada tape yeah. and, uh, and the guy with the absinthe. We've not talked about American Idol. I've not given you my, my absolute lock of the year. Is this your big parlay? <laughs> this is my parlay of the year. Well, unless you say one thing, I'm not going to be prepared to disagree with you. Hey, well, it, it, Mike, it is, is it going to be controversial? I believe so. Ooh. Hey. I believe it's going to be controversial. Wait, I'm ready. I smell a bet. Remember, soul versus pop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Soul versus pop. USA Today. Remember that. Mm -hmm. Talent versus garbage. Well, what did I read today? Talent the... versus a garbage can. What did I read today, though? Who text messages? Young white girls. Oh, really? Now, well, apparently, now this is what I'm reading now. Mm -hmm. uh, young blacks don't text message. It's a young white thing. Hmm. Is that is that another uh, is that from the glorious USA Today again? Yeah, hold on a second, uh, or maybe it's from the po you know you know I need the uh, Robbie. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike. Would you give me the post? Yes, it, it, you know the the thing to me yesterday you identified this that that USA Today was trying to make this some sort of race issue by yeah. you know soul versus pop. And the thing that's ridiculous oh, about the one, that. the one part in it right there, the, uh, the style. The one thing that's ridiculous about that is the fact that uh, you know last year uh, you had a uh, black-white okay. issue with Reuben and Clay, and it was there was never anything said about that. I got to read you what she writes today. What is this? Uh, blah 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 blah. Ooh, hold on about the, uh, uh, the, 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 the with the girls with the oh come on with the white girls. Oh okay, here you go. Uh, she's uh, ref now what she's referring to in this article is calls to the Tom Joyner show. Okay, Tom Joyner morning show. Um, another caller speculated that the reason that they had received the fewest votes was that African Americans don't text message, while little white kids vote repeatedly with their cell phones. 
And then they mess, then they mention, and now here's another level of, you know, at, take it as it is. Right. Then the, then the newspaper says text messaging costs 10 cents a vote. Phone voting is free. So, God. I mean, you read into wow. it whatever you want. We're not going to say that that's some sort of socioeconomic no. statement, but we are. Mm. Oh, I would love to text message, but Lord, Lord, I am 10 cents every time. And look at gasoline at $2.25 a minute. Mm. An hour, a gallon, we can't do it. We cannot afford it. We cannot afford it. Meanwhile, I have now text messaged 25 times. Because mm -hmm. my parents give me a generous allowance. Yeah. Can yeah, text right. messages come up busy? I d no, no. Oh, and here's the answer to that. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I researched this with my kid. Yes. Who happens to be white and yes. does text message. Uh -huh. The deal on American Idol is if you text message a vote in, as long as it arrives in the, in like last night it was a four hour window, right. mm -hmm. even if it stacks up, it counts. Really? Oh. It's like, well, are you ready for your, are, are you going to make your, your bold? After, Mike? Are you teasing? After the break. Uh -huh. So after the break, uh, sure. may, may I inform our listening audience that after the break, you will announce the winner of American Idol? Bet your ass. You'll get it here wow. first, folks. Bet your ass. Bet your ass. Donnie's winner pick. I know America. That's D-O-N-I. You do. I know America, and I know that I know that we've had we've had our ups and downs this year. That America has led me astray a couple of times. They didn't back me with JPL. Mm -hmm. Oh, and hey, how about Paul Anka? Nice career, dummy. Oh my God, a that, nice nice song at the end. That's a nice pimple on the end of your career. <laughs> <laughs> that was worse than when uh, Diana De Gorma di didn't hit the note in the middle of the song. Oh man, when she was singing uh, "Cry Out Loud," don't cry out loud. Oh, and don't cry out loud. Ouch. And at some point, I'd like to analyze the lyrics to that. Don't we, cry out loud. Yeah, would you have somebody print those lyrics out for me during the break? Because it really is not a very positive song. Mama cried the day the circus came to town. I, I just, he didn't like parades just going by. I played the song like 8,000 times when I was a DJ. And it was always uh, one of those you just you put on a go. Oh, you don't cry the day the circus came to town. But, but you get the, the message is like, the, don't, the message is... Just keep to, it inside. Yeah, whatever you're feeling... Don't let anything out. No. And, and even though you, there's not a chance in the world My mantra. That, that you can ever win at anything, don't worry about it. Because you're okay, because you're a big fat loser. But whatever you do, shut your mouth, your, your mouth about it. Right. Okay. <laughs> Come on, what are you talking about? Pep talk over. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. I flopped the nuts straight. That's it. What the f*** are you talking about? That's it. Take it no, back, man. Yes. No more. No. Not tonight. This son of a bitch all night. He chick, chick, chick. He tripped me. Well, you feeling satisfied now, Teddy? Because I can go on busting you up all night. Yes. Yes. He beats me. Straight up. Pay that me and his money. The Don and Mike Show. Come, tickle the toes of Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Not mine. <laughs> no, no, stop it. Just Mike. <laughs> Help yourself. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Ow. I am not into that. <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> right, we have the words. Yes. It's a song that uh, Diana... Uh, sang last night on uh, American Idol. Don't cry out loud, and some, something about it has uh, has intrigued you. I thought it when I when I heard her sing it the other uh, mm -hmm. two or three weeks ago. Talk about an inspirational song. Okay. All right. Baby cried the day the circus came to town because she didn't want parades just passing by her, so she painted on a smile and took up with some clown, but she danced without a net upon the wire. I know a lot about her because you see babies an awful lot like me. And here's you get to the part that's really Isn't it? I know a lot about her, don't you see? Because you see. Because you see. Ah. Baby is an awful lot like me. me. And here you go. Here's the part where you really feel good about yourself. Okay. Don't cry out loud. Just keep it inside. Learn how to hide your feelings. Fly high and proud. And if you should fail, <laughs> remember you almost had it all. It's a depressing song. Yeah, and I, I can't read it like a like, like a sensitive person. It's it's better when you read it really like this. 
Baby saw the day they pulled that big top down. They left behind their dreams among the litter. The different kind of love she thought she'd found. There was nothing left. Just sawdust and glitter. <laughs> Baby can't be broken, could you see? She had the finest teacher. That was me. I told her. This is disturbing. Don't cry out loud. Just keep it inside. Hide your feelings. Fly high and proud. And if you should fall, fail. Mm -hmm. well, remember, fail. you almost made it. That is why, uh, after this radio show is dead and gone, I know exactly what you are going to do. It's one word. Clergy. Mm -hmm. I was hoping you could read it like the man Amen. who wrote the song. Amen. Peter Allen. <laughs> Peter Allen wrote it? Yes. Oh. Don't cry out loud. <laughs> Keep it inside. Hide your feelings. Learn how to hide your feelings. Fly high and proud. <laughs> if you should fall, what the hell? You almost made it, you big loser. You know who, who'd sing that well would be uh, Judy Garland, because it really sounds... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Almost exactly like her when her she's wrote. talking about, so what? Yeah, right. absolutely. I'm going to write a book. Don't cry out loud. Yuck. Okay, so oh. watch the American Idol. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to reveal your... Yes, I am. Your pick to click? Time for the reveal. And here's what I'm thinking. As I watched the both of them sing last night, that uh, the... Diana did better in the first couple, and then she screwed up the last one, and Fantasia did better at the end. But I can't get out of my head that that they've all already decided that, sh that Fantasia is the winner. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. My pick is not based on who I think is the most talented. Y your pick, I want your pick to be based on who you think is going to win. Diana Del 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 Garmo. Garmo. Yes, that's my pick. For, Are you willing to bet? For the record, <laughs> since I'm always I'm always looking for one of those easy bets. Now, uh, because it's something like this, I ain't I ain't gonna like. Uh, you can't put anything on. Shave anything off, right. or, or you know, walk outside in a diaper or anything. But if you want to lay some cash, if you want to make a bet with me, a cash bet, I'll pay up tomorrow if I lose. But I have faith. In the tar like bet, bet, American. I'm, I'm willing to, I would love to bet you whatever amount you would you would feel comfortable in betting. Okay, how much would I feel comfortable in betting? I know your wife betting? doesn't like you betting. No, I, I know she hates it. So, I mean, you, that's why I, I give the terms to you, because I will bet any amount. I will bet any amount you wow. wish. I will bet mm. any amount you wish. Oh, but, but will you not at least concede that there's a chance? <laughs> Based on the season, of course there's a chance. Okay, hold on. I mean, really, who knows? I mean, but, but it's, it will be an incredible injustice if Fantasia doesn't win. Yes, I know. But I, I, will, I know I will, all of that. It was, it was an incredible injustice that the two the finalists weren't Latoya and Fantasia. And the odds are not that America... The, the, Hi, this is uh, You can leave a message on even, myself. I can't even ask your permission. I just talked to you two goddamn minutes ago during the commercial. I also have a tremendous amount of uh, that thing you got, that... That trend thing, the you black have. white thing. No, no, no. no the, the I'm talking about on your the pulse. Yes, mm -hmm. that thing you have that I don't have. That's always this. The baby has kept this show on top but for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm not. You have a you have you have a gut on certain things. I don't know whether this but is a, a couple your of gut or whether a couple of weeks ago I would have bet I would have bet you money that Latoya wouldn't have been. No, but you were wrong on a couple of these during this. Yeah, right. I'm not saying I'm infallible. I'm and just I'm saying, saying that I just think really that this is. It would be the it would be the greatest end to the, t you the know what? TV show. Here's what I think. Last night, she had a chance to make it much more of a competition, but at the end, Diana DeGarmo redid a song that she had done better before. And as soon as that happened, uh, I think it was she was out of the running and? because she stepped all over. Don't cry out loud. And that's one of the songs that got her into the final two. But here's the thing. This is where then the, all the judges say. That really wasn't good. You had that bad spot where you where you, where you dashed it, and then leave it to my man Simon. You know that's it. It's over. You, this this not, is your coronation, he says to Fantasia. But here's the deal: when Simon says stuff like that, I think it can be be damaging. When Simon says legitimate compliments, when he makes legitimate comp compliments, it can be very beneficial. And what he said last night was, he said she is the best that he's ever seen in any of the competitions. Hmm. When he made that comment, I thought that would help her instead of hurt her. It's when they all gang up. I think you're right. There's a chance. But here's the thing: 
I'm just counting. The only reason I, I'll make this underdog bet with you is that I think there's enough people out there who who are watching. Who this just show. want to mess with the competition? Yeah. Who yeah. really at this point don't? I mean, does anybody really? Is there any great injustice done? That that the best singer doesn't win one of these dumb shows. Well, I, no. I, the thing is, though, I wish it was more of a legitimate talent competition. I don't, because I wouldn't watch it. Then it's Star Search. I mean, I like it because of the circus atmosphere that it has. Yeah, but see, I think you can get a star. You can get somebody that's a a unique talent. Uh, but it not, doesn't I mean. God, but might get our society. I mean, not, Diana De Garmo. But they're not a, stars. Clay Aiken's not a star. No, you're right. They're not. Ruben a star. Stuttered's not a star. But, Kelly Clarkson's not a star. But I enjoy. I would enjoy it more if going into it that at the end you would really have a chance, possibly, to get somebody that everybody in the country would be excited about. Uh, well, That's what that would. And you know what? As much as I thought, hey, Ruben and and Clay were fine last year. I don't think and Me? Kelly and Justin. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see somebody where, hey man, this person, I would really be something. I root for the underdog, mm -hmm. and I root for the underdog because it would just screw up. You don't always root for the underdog. No, no, no. But in a situation like this, right? I you bet because a lot of times I you know me stick with a winner I like you know you you like to root for the person that's going to win sure mm -hmm. sure but in a situation like this it's too great. I mean, would it it'd be the greatest? You, you got to sit through two hours. It would be an incredible upset to get to the last ten minutes. Uh, but then the last ten minutes, and then imagine the upheaval. Is you think there was an upheaval about the Iraqi photos? Here's some. What if the fat white girl wins? You might like this because here's something they were saying. Then people are going to be pissed. Here's what they were saying, and I watched um, Mary Hart, Ameri uh, Entertainment, Entertainment, Tonight. Entertainment Tonight. I watched. I watched that show, and one of the things they said on that show, and incidentally, the stuff they do with American Idol on Entertainment Tonight is just makes me want to... You don't like the stuff with Kujo? Oh, my God, I can't stand it. <laughs> all right, this is Kujo. And now they're all in bed together. Mm -hmm. You know, they, the Idol judges are all in bed together, aren't they cute? And they're popcorn. <laughs> so one of the things that was said was that uh, one of the girls needs to win the competition, and obviously it's Diana DeGarmo, to have any chance of successful mm -hmm. a successful you know, career. The other one already has a success, and, and, and I agree with that. I think they were saying that it just was a little covering their bet, and it made it intrigued me because they said, you know, this is not necessarily, as you say, a slam dunk. No, it's or not, Fantasia. It's not a talent competition. You're dealing with. But with that with, said, with the moronic American public of which I'm a card carrying member. But with that said, you know, I know. here is the key to my safety deposit box. Name a price. I bet you. Uh, I'm up, I'm 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 left. Now don't you you know you're going to have to clear it. So so before you. No, I'll make it just. I'm, I'll bet you a hundred bucks. C note is fine. I bet you a hundred bucks. That's fine. A uh, Benjamin. I go higher. But yeah. you know me. A hundred dollars is fine. I bet you a hundred bucks just because I get a hundred. No singing outside, just a hundred. No, nothing. Just a hundred dollars. Not you know, not to sweeten the pot. Like when whoever the loser is has to sing. Don't cry out loud on on the lawn. <laughs> no, no, no chance. <laughs> no okay. no All right. chance. One hundred dollars. Uh, I you know I feel that this is. I feel almost guilty. I feel and, like I'm taking your money. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm betting on everybody that... that See, even if you win, you're not going to feel that great about it. Every, oh, no, I will. I'll love it. If, <laughs> if I win, right. it, it won't even be the fact that I beat be you in a bet. Right. It'll be the fact that we, the cards of America, <laughs> beat the system. Yeah. That the, the least talented person right. is the winner of American Idol. <laughs> Who knows? Now is it also Wait, but would you not agree? I know. Now, just take the fact that I know you love the television show. Yes. You love the television show the way it's structured, and you like the John Peter Lewis's. But, but do you think, don't you think it's possible with a nationwide competition, the way this is structured and with the resources they have financially and otherwise, that they could produce yeah, but who wants some to better that? talent? They go to some faggot Broadway show. <laughs> yeah. What I want to see is just regular kids, like not good enough to make it on the Mickey Mouse Club, <laughs> and they're standing up there singing, and God damn it, this time I want the worst person to win. <laughs> okay. I want the fat white girl to win, because it would turn the world upside friggin' down. I guarantee you... I don't know you, if it would turn the world upside I, down. Do you mind. know that two days ago, on the front page of your Washington Post, not the entertainment part, Front page, Iraqi prisoners, Bush, gas prices, American Idol. Oh, yeah. Front page, Washington Post. Right. Diana wins. It's the front page of the newspaper tomorrow. Mm -hmm.
What front if Fantasia page. wins? What? Won't Fantasia also make the front page, don't you think? I think so. Yeah, well, yeah, either, either way. way. Either, either way, way, they'll, either they'll, way they'll, they'll make it. They'll yeah. both be on the... But, but, and either way, they'll be forgotten the next day. That's yeah. true. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. that, is, that is so true. But I really do. I mean, listening to Fantasia and, and watching her really... Last night, I think she's got a legitimate uh, chance. More than, I think, more than any other one. Simply because she is, uh, she is unique. She does bring her own style to it, and I think she could do anything. Mm. I don't know. I can't... And I'm really... I mean, I'm... I can't get past her mouth. I know. You know, that's, she, uh, that's part of it's it. It's like too. she got the Condoleezza Rice, Rice goofy two feet. Yay! Yeah, but Condoleezza only has two two feet that are far apart. None of these. Uh, <laughs> you know, not that not that Diana de del uh, kangaroo pad uh, pouch. Oh, you know where's any be, be, be better? I want you know. I want a Polaroid in ten years. And, and listen, <laughs> you know, if, you, if she wins the compo, really get her some lipo. Right. Win the compo. Get some lipo. And, and Diana de Garmo in ten years is going to be like that woman on who. Uh, What's eating Gilbert Grape? <laughs> That's what it's going to be. I hate it like Michelle. Hey, Michelle, hey. Those are, baby, those are good instincts. That's good. <laughs> you are a good salesperson. I just had some salespeople that were just standing by the window. Going, no, they were their extra clients. I'm sure they were clients, clients I think. Because Michelle was following up and literally hurting them down the hallway. Pushing them out of the way. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, hello, uh, Alan. Don and Mike show. Hello. Hey, I voted for that Diana chick about a thousand times. Now, hold on. You, you know, that's really got to be impossible. Because I tried like a mental patient last night for an hour with a redial. Me too. I got through once. You have to wait until the second, third, and fourth hour. After that, I had a cell phone. I had a regular phone. I was just hitting redial, redial, and then it... Hi, this is Diana. Turn, tune into American Idol Finals, sponsored by ATT. And then you hear that all the time. You can, you can do it. You can work the system. Uh, all right. And your, your motivation for voting for Diana? Going against the grain, creating controversy, upsetting the whole world dynamic. Mm -hmm. If only there's you know more idiots like you out there. I'm sure, there are. You know, work, working in the comic book store, <laughs> yeah, living with mom. Hello, Don and Mike, hosted radio show. You <laughs> might, you might have a point. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello. If every guy out there, does me say if every guy out there with a skid mark called, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> she would be the runaway winner. Exciting. <laughs> Hello, Daniel. Yes, hey, um, do you guys really like Fantasia's voice? I, uh, my opinion, Donnie, yeah, I think she's got an, an outstanding, extraordinary, one-of-a-kind voice. I mean, to me, in one Mike? of those songs last night, she was singing, yeah, 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 yeah. No, and, that was the, and that was the song with the bad arrangement that was just horrible, and I think they all agreed that it was horrible. But, man, when she did that song, uh, Summertime, I mean, she does that oh, yeah. song. Yeah, you know the she song? does that song as well as any any performer has ever sung it. The song that yeah, snuck that was, was the song that the girl from the other season wrote. Yeah. You know, and horrible. I think but Latoya should have been the winner. I, I think, think Latoya. I, I think it should have come down. I, I, you know, I really would have liked to see Latoya and Fantasia just because I would have liked to see who stepped it up. Hello, Don and Mike. Hello, is this me? Am I on the air? Yeah, you're on the air. Yeah, there's a show on the WB called Superstars USA. All right, come on. We'll uh -huh. tell you to listen to the show every day, for yeah. God's sakes. We only talked about it for a month. Hello, <laughs> Don and Mike. <laughs> Just think of it, it's a hundred bucks out of my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be down a hundred. Take your money. Yes, you will. <laughs> no, I'm not. Because I would take it from you. I'm not unless you get cocky. I mean, I, 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 it's no fun to bet you when you're not cocky and you're not cocky. But now, if I'm cocky, though, tomorrow you got to pay me. Huh? If I'm cocky yeah, if tomorrow? I'm, if, I'm, if, I, if I have to pay you, I'll pay you. Yeah. If yeah. I have to pay you, I'll pay you gladly. Hello, right. Don and Mike. This, this is not a normal bet for us. And I will not accept a $100 gift certificate to your restaurant either. <laughs> Thanks. Look around, Cafe. Oh, no. Come on. Hello. I'll be there tonight. Hello, Don and Mike. <laughs> or. Sorry, Don. Or. <laughs> a little help on Wednesday. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, you're on the air. Come on by tonight. Hey, guys. Hi. Ladies um, I think Diana's going to win tomorrow. I'll tell you why. Well, if she wins tomorrow. That's news. <laughs> <laughs> because she's more. Of hold the on, American hold on, Idol. my friend, my friend. Yes. <laughs> you are aware of the fact that the results show is tonight. Yes. Oh, oh tonight. Okay. All right. I, okay, I'm a dumbass. Okay, just, just repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead. What do you want to say? <clears throat> um, she's gonna win because she's more of the American Idol than Fantasia is. That's okay. you know. Why uh let's go down this slip. Yeah, let's, let's take this, <laughs> why is, let's take this trip. Why is she more of a of an American Idol than Fantasia? Cuz she um she just she just sings more for the younger crowd than Fantasia. Fantasia can go out and sing yeah, for, I, I, I for think us. Yeah, I I noticed that when I listened to the playlist from Diana DeGarmo, I find it much more youthful than Fantasia. Yeah, that Melissa Manchester song. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's pretty happening. Don't cry out loud. God. Hello Don and Mike. Hello. 
Oh, now listen. More oh, children, yeah. more children not being watched by their parents. Are right? these children calling? Uh, and the line went dead. Of course, you know, that's always line disturbing. Again. Hello, Don and Mike show the latchkey kids <laughs> calling in. Hello, Don, Do Mike. yeah, Don and Mike. Hi, last call here on this American Idol thing. Hey, uh, Don, I wanted to know if you know that uh, as of yesterday, uh, Diana DeGarmo was at thirteen to five in, in terms of uh, the odds were thirteen to five. So if you bet Mike a hundred dollars, you should, in a sense, if you win, win two hundred and sixty. No, no, no. Now you're being like Rob using your your big yeah. brain. No, it's an even up bet. It's like when we bet football, we don't bet points. It's no. just. Who wins the game? Why don't you go back to the lounge at Caesars and play Keno, okay? Thank you. Thank you, though. <laughs> Thank you, Donovan. He's one of my skid mark guys. He's, he's probably one of the, the oh. skid marks that might make it happen for the well, fat girl really tonight. 13 lines. So technically, Mike would blow it. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. Mike, there's a whole lot of people that want to draw the comparison between one of the old Great Jet quarterback Joe Namath and Chad Pennington. What impresses you about Chad? I believe uh, everything that anyone else has watched uh, Chad play uh, impresses me. The same thing impresses them. He's a quality, classy quarterback that has a touch on the football. He's not a thrower. He's a passer. His mind is ahead of what the defense is, and if the Jets can support him, they will win the championship. Joe, it's been a tough season for Jet fans. What does it mean to you now when the team is struggling? I want to kiss you. I couldn't care less about the team struggling. What we know is we can improve. Chad missed Chad Pennington, our quarterback, missed the first part of the season, and we struggled. We're looking to next season. We're looking to make a, a noise now, and I want to kiss you. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Yeah. Huge compliment. Yeah, you know Joe Namath, part of the four-decade team. We'll see these guys at halftime. All right. Thank you, Susie. Joe's just a happy guy. Isn't he? He's just a happy guy. Oh, boy, is he happy. Don and Mike show. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe. Hi, hey, Julia. Hello. This is get delicious. Well, we tried. Yeah. Words are hard for them. Don and Mike. Uh, the absinthe guy is here. Yeah. I'm gonna let him out in the hallway. I want to bring him in here in a second. Uh -huh. but if we could just take a, a brief moment to get some closure, if we can, on this thing from yesterday. We should. Yeah, I'd like to. And also, as I mentioned, we got so much happening today. I'll also I just give you a, a, just a taste. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Back in 1987, the world's oldest phone screener, Joe Ardinger, was wasted with a tape recorder mm -hmm. the last time the cicadas invaded the area. Wow. 17 years ago, mm -hmm. he has the tape. Please listen for a moment. We have about 10 minutes worth of this. Oh, oh this sounds oh. great. Wasted Joe uh -huh. 17 years ago with the cicadas. Check. One, two, three. This is Ardinger. And we're foraging out into my front lawn at this very minute. It's about 3.20 on Saturday, a uh, Sunday morning. It's <laughs> 3.20. We're going to re try to record some locusts. Locusts? <laughs> As we called them. That's all I have for you right now. <laughs> That's right. All right, I'm going to go out on a limb. You went on a limb with Diana DeGarmo. I'm going to say this could be Joe Ardinger's greatest work yet. <laughs> Just two days. Yeah. Just a tease, Joe from 17 years ago. We've got, no, wait. We've got the tape, but I really think we should follow up on 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 something that happened uh, late in the show yesterday. Yeah. Uh Oh, without uh, going down the road and, and telling you everything we've already told you, here's what it is in a nutshell. That the manager and the, the program director here of this radio station, uh, golly, there are other guys that work here. Yeah. Other DJs. Right. And uh, Ron and Fez are their names. And we're very fond of them and their show. Amen. And 
their deal is up, and I guess, I guess they don't have a show like ours where they don't they don't talk about the behind the scenes. Did they stuff. not touch on this last night at all? No, Does I anybody know whether they no, did? I, I listened to them for a half hour on the way home, and they didn't they, deal with it. Not not a word. Hmm. All right. Now I'm I'm sure it's because they don't like to talk about you know what's happening with their contract. Yeah, I mean here. if they've got an ongoing thing, I completely understand. Right. You know, and God knows we love talking about it. I mean you've heard us go through and it a million times. The way we do stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. So anyway. The deal is that for a while there was a rumor going around because their contract is being negotiated. I don't know if they're going to stay or if they're going to go. I hope that they stay. Right. Should they stay or should they go now? I've heard that, they, that the indications are it's going to work out. They're going to stay. and That, that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, I don't know how long ago it was, we were doing the uh, one of our absinthe shows. Now <laughs> apparently one of our regular monthly absinthe shows. <laughs> and i would had a little bit. Uh -huh. And uh, as Ron and Fez were walking into the building, because they do a split shift, they have to work at 11 at night and at 7 at night, 11 in the morning and 7 at night, mm -hmm. we don't see them a lot. As they are walking in the building, because I was loaded, I said, hey, Ron and Fez, come on in here. Tell us if you're leaving to go to Tampa. Right. Because this is, you know, listen, I'm in the radio business. I right. talk to other radio people. We gossip. Mm -hmm. You gossip about stuff. Right. So then the next thing, you know, over the last, even before this started, Cameron Gray, the program director, is coming in and giving me, as it turns out, what's great material. We haven't gotten to it yet. Tapes and resumes from disc jockeys who want to work at our radio station, WJFK. Right. And the reason that they're sending these tapes and that we have all of these bad DJ tapes to listen to is because there was an ad mm -hmm. printed in the trade magazine mm -hmm. that said WJFK has an opening. Or on an internet tip sheet. Yeah, well, actually, it's not even Internet. It's something you got to pay for. Okay. Okay, and, and it might be Internet that you have to pay for, but either way. Uh -huh. So, to, to preface this a bit more, about a month ago, when Cameron came in with one of these DJ tapes to give me, say, hey, this would be funny for the show, and I said, I agree, I read the letter, and the letter, the cover letter said, Dear Cameron, I'd love to work at WJFK. It's a great heritage station. We could do a, a great job filling the shoes of Ron and Fez, mm -hmm. the guys that are on after us. Hmm. So I call Cameron in, because despite what you might think, I'm not a, a total a jerk. I call Cameron in, and I say, Hey, dude, you know, I, I'm glad you're giving us the tapes, but like this letter says that they're going to replace Ron, and, they want Ron and Fez's job. I don't feel cool reading this. Like, this is not, you know, this, regardless of what I say, right, drunk if I said to them, hey, come tell us what's happening. I said, I don't feel cool with this. Cameron said, and his quote was, that ran by accident. That ad ran by accident. Now, yes. here's the deal. When you talk about an ad going into a publication of any kind, an accident is strange because you have to contact the people that run the uh, the place. You have to... Pay money to uh, run the ad. You have to compose the ad. You have now, to put the phone numbers in. It just, it, it didn't seem very plausible that that would be an accident. I know that I am Belich on the show, and I do because it's a show. Yeah. But sometimes I tell you, flat, flat square. <laughs> what Joe Steisman would say. Okay. I'll be flat square honest with I don't, you. I don't BS you. I, right. I, you know, and, and my wife gets mad at me because I say all the time, I'll swear, I swear on my kid's life. I say, well, that's the only way that the people will know that I'm not, that I'm dropping the facade of doing the show for a second. Right. To say, I mean, I love my kid more than anything in the world. I trade my life for his in a New York second. Right. So when I say that, I mean it. Mm -hmm. And I said to the camera, I swear on my kid's life, you came in here and said that that ad was a an accident. And not only did you say it to me, you said it with Rob in the room. Yeah, Rob, was, Rob was standing right there. The ad ran as an accident. So Cameron came in yesterday on our show and said, I never said that. <laughs> now, I'm telling you, and I'm not trying to make a, a, a mountain out of a molehill, mm -hmm. but it does stick in your craw a bit. Right. The guy's lying. Now, here's the thing about these management guys. They're so stupid. I understand that they're negotiating with these other disc jockeys, and I understand that that there are levels of, of, of negotiation that go on. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is come in and say, listen, you know, hey, drop this topic. You know, just, well, do anything it. off air that's of a sensitive nature... We wouldn't be in this business for as long as we've been in it if we did not, when asked, back off on something. So if he just came in and said, or even if he came in when he was on the air and said, hey, it's all about negotiating, we have a position, they have a position, let's just drop this. But but instead, instead we, get, we get kind of half-truths, we get, we get cryptic he, comments. He lies, he lies about having said it, and then, then, the, then the general manager, so one of them says, either the program director or the general manager says, well, the only reason the ad was even out there 
is because you said something about... Uh, well, Cameron said that initially. Yeah. Said this on your show. That it was out there because we had said something on our show. And then Alan, at the end of the day yesterday, said, no one in this company placed that ad. Now, there even are a lot... If you really want to get into semantics, there are ways you can talk around anything. Even though Alan also said, on a separate occasion to me, as he said yesterday on the show, he also told me that the fact that this ad ran... As an accident. As an accident. Now... Mm -hmm. We took the time to get in touch with the guy from the on-air tip sheet company. Okay. Here is the note that he sent to Cameron, which was forwarded to Rob, and I'm going to read it to you now. To whom, or who, to whom it may concern about Cameron, this is to let you and all interested parties know that the listing for the night opportunity on WJFK came about as a news item from All Access. That is yet another disc jockey gossip job service. Uh -huh. I picked up on the item while the industry at large was in a frenzy over the Bubba the Love Sponge and, and, and Stern. Uh -huh. It was to be no more than a potential opening based on rumor huh? and should have run in the tip sheet, only I lost track of it with the 600 other gigs that are listed. Sorry for any discomfort or ill feelings. It was just a hot tip with no temperature okay. it was not sent to me by anyone regards and regrets tom hamilton now, right, now that, Mike, would, that would on. exonerate everybody however however hear me for a second if all of that is true why would both cameron and alan say the the ad was a the word was it ran as an accident it ran as an accident mm -hmm. if if somebody did this to you you're running a business they run an ad that's not true. If you're talking about it with somebody, you characterize it as, as an accident? No, you would say the truth. You would say that this ran because somebody picked up on it. Okay. okay. And they got it from like a website. Yeah. Right. Okay. Would you, would you just... Why are they saying... Because this speaks to the way they do stuff around here. And this is why I don't believe them because... It, it, I'll tell you what an accident is. Walking out on the street and getting hit by a bus. You're falling off the ladder. <laughs> that's an accident. Now, Buzz, that's debatable. Okay. That's the It ran as an accident. Why are they saying it like that? I don't know. Why would you know? It's what it does. Look, why wouldn't you just say? Here's why I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated because you're absolutely right. Why would they say it like that? And when they say it like that, it arouses suspicion. And the thing that's tough about this is the fact that now the guy that runs it has said yes, he runs ads based on rumors. So in other words, they are exonerated from this. But if they're exonerated, why didn't they just come out and say that in the first place? And you know why, why did they have to be you know so why? cryptic? Because they're lying. Because <laughs> why else would they if they weren't lying? Why do people lie? Mm -hmm. Why do people lie? There's one other reason. People lie because no. sometimes the truth doesn't fit. No, no, no. I mean, there's one other reason besides why would they lie? Why? Uh, you know, the, the, the stupidity factor. Oh, but no, no. I've got an answer for that. If there's anything that we know about Alan Line One, mm -hmm. since he got this. Faux job as the general manager here. You can't call and, him acting anymore. And, well, and that's why I called him right. Fono, F A U X. Even though he's the, you know, the, the, man, unquote, right. the, the general manager, mm -hmm. he is, because he, his job is tenuous at best. I mean, he's, he's mm -hmm. sitting on a rocky seat he has for a long time. He has dotted every T and crossed every I. And I know I got it back. <laughs> but you know what I mean. That's I know. He, every detail, yeah. trust me. I know Alan. I'm looking at this but ad. You know what kills me here? What kills me here is they can they can put it to rest now. But here's the thing. Hold on. I'm looking at the ad, uh -huh. and it's if I'm Alan, and, and thank you God that I'm not. Uh -huh. But I could picture being Alan. Alan would look at this because it's it's on this tip sheet. It's got WJFK FM. It's got the address. It's his equal opportunity employer. If I'm Alan, the first thing I do, being as I'm paranoid and worried that I'm going to lose my job and everything else, I call this guy up and I say, hey. Hal, you're killing me here. Mm -hmm. Because Alan has demonstrated this mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. that if there's something out in the marketplace, something out in the industry that doesn't have his seal of approval on it, something that if a muckety-muck from Infinity comes to him and says, how can this get out there? If he doesn't have the answer, that's how he bases his whole existence. Mm -hmm. right? That everything is buttoned down and he has an answer to everything. Right. I'd be curious if they came down on this guy for running this thing. Uh, not a word. And I, I'm still, it's an accident. And just one other little point of order. The uh, information you have in your hand yeah. came to us through Rob or through Cameron. 
Cameron. It's Cameron came the, through Cameron. The email came to Cameron. Cameron uh, forwarded it to Rob. Rob forwarded it to me. So. And if, if this guy... What? I spoke to the guy. I mean, it's genuine. It's oh, you spoke to the guy at the tip sheet? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you... Well, but, so Rob, well, can step up. Well, Come here. There's, not, there's nothing to add. Well, what, I mean, what did the guy say? Did you grill him? Don was there. I mean, he was basically... Yeah, I mean, he grilled him, but not like I would grill him. I mean, you, you know Rob. Rob was being nice with the guy. And then meanwhile, I was having to say to Rob, ask him how come it says EEO. How come it says yeah, all that yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. What, what were his answers to that? I said, why does it... What about the stuff that says EEO? Did that come from the tip? He says, that's added. I think he says that... I mean, he had a word for it. It was to the tune that it's wrote. I mean, he always puts that on. It's wrote? I mean, R -O -T. that's just what, how they add it. They, it's written, you mean? Well, no, not wrote like that, but it's just... Oh, habit. by rote, by yeah. rote. It's by, by habit. So they put that, that down on. there in every ad yeah, that they run. Exactly. Okay. Well, but now, now is, but uh, let me also say that as I'm looking at these ads... This I, exonerates uh, the, the, the hold on, people here. Let me tell you some of the things that it says... Court of law. Let me, says, let me tell you some of the things it says below each ad. Because it's not, it, it's not, it's not the same thing. Underneath one of the ads, it says, full-time, EOE, major market experience required, no telephone calls. Hmm. The next ad says, full-time, send tape and resume, EOE, computer skills selector, multi-track and track analog appearances, must know the music, no calls. Hmm. Another one says, full-time, EOE, computer skills selector, no calls. Another one says, full-time, send tape and resume, E&E, &E, no calls. The one for the ad that uh, allegedly didn't run says, full-time, send tape and resume, EOE, major market experience required, please no phone calls. My point on this is there's not one standard no format. after the ad thing that runs. Every one of these is different. Unless mm -hmm. the guy at the tip sheet says, oh, on this one I'm going to say uh, EEO, on this one well, I'm going to say... I think yeah. he indicated that if it's not something specific... He puts on what he put on. Okay, for that then, one. Uh, then let's just. So there's a chance that this guy writes the ads to look more credible than they actually may even be. Makes his mm. tip sheet look better. Ah, then. Uh, but let's call Alan though. Because so how is it an accident? <laughs> well, that. Uh, <laughs> this place. How is it an? How is it an accident? You know what about this? And place? here's the other thing. About you know, you realize now though. Here's the other thing though. But, but they uh, imagine this. Imagine that Ron and Fez are driving to work one day. When we're doing the absinthe show, and they hear me saying, "Hey, what are you gonna go to Tampa Bay? Why don't you come and talk about it?" They go to Alan, and Alan says, "Oh, I can't control anything they say." And then let's say the next day that somebody goes to Ron and Fez and says, "Hey, there's there's an ad for your job," mm -hmm. and they go to Alan. You know what Alan says? <laughs> That's Don. He just won't shut up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they're trying to blame. Me for being the bad Wait guy. Wait a minute, but you got your information. You didn't get your information from the thin air. You got your information from another I, source. I know I did. I know I did. But I mean, Cameron, you but a source that dish jockeys but, can read. But Cameron indicated yesterday that the whole thing started by something that we that, said on our show. And that is not true. All right, well, we're going to move past this ad thing because that's not true. I, I don't that's believe that's true. true. I believe they got mm. it from that thing. I know. That's where they got it. One of these dummies from upstairs would just be honest. Oh, mercy. You know what I mean? You see, they're trying to palm it off of us, and we're calling them liars, and, you know. Hi, it's Cameron. Cameron, it's Don and Mike. Oh, Cameron, hello. Cameron, have you been listening to all this? I have. All right, all right. so how is, how is it an accident? Yes. The whole ad thing. How is it an accident? Can you explain that to me? Who said it's an accident? Uh, didn't Alan say it was an accident? I don't know what Alan said. Oh, on this geez. show yesterday, Alan... Uh, aren't I exonerated? No. How? On, this, on this show yesterday, Alan said, I told you privately it was an accident. And Cameron, really, I swear on my kid's life, you came into the studio when I showed you the letter from the guys from San Diego that had the names Ron and Fez, and I said, I don't feel cool reading this because of the ad that obviously is run, and you said... The ad ran as an accident. Right, I yes, swear when you were on talking, my kid's life you said that. Well, absolutely, and I believe you. But yesterday when you were talking about it, you were saying that my quote was that I, I placed the ad by accident, which I denied. All right. All right then That's let me, all I, I was denying. You know what, you know, I don't deny your conversation. Okay, I'm, and I'm going I'm to let you slide on that, but I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Where do you think this guy mm -hmm. got his information? And I don't, because I don't. He said from all access. Okay. Uh, well, what is all access? A web one of those websites. Oh, okay. uh, gossip. So, so when the statement was made that they got it from our show, that's incorrect. Also, 
That was that if was we, if we exonerate you. Oh, that's yeah. cool. No, no, that's fine. I'm just saying the rumor was out there, so I don't know where it came from. The rumor, what rumor was out there? The rumor about Ron and Fez. What what rumor about Ron and Fez? The, all the all the, the assorted rumors about their potential move. Okay, but the thing is, we, we it was indicated to us that they got the, that this ad ran because, based because on Don I made saying one something on the show, and, oh, that, well. and that's absolutely not true. Okay, well that's fine, but I'm saying no, that, no, 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 not not that's fine. That has been reported. That rumor was out there. On, uh, geez, what do I say? FMQB.com? I mean, it was, uh, the rumor mill was, was, was generated long before Don said anything on the show. Sure. Sure. No, and if I said that, I apologize too. Okay. So you do admit when you came down here that, do you or do you not remember the conversation where you said... I talked to, to Rob after the show, and I, I remember discussing the ad, but all I was denying yesterday was your statement that I regretted placing the ad, which I never did. No, no, no. Not that you were... No, wait, wait. We're, we've reached a conclusion here. No, absolutely. I, Cameron, I believe, did not run the ad. I believe that. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that the ad was not in there because of something that Don said on the show. And, and you've acknowledged that, Cameron. Absolutely. All right. Okay, and, then what about yesterday? Though? Here's uh, my. This is my only issue, Mike. What? Is that the guy came down here a month ago when I asked him about this, and he said his quote was, the, ran, the ad ran as, ran, an ran as an accident. As a matter of fact... Not only did you say that it ran as an accident, you said it ran as an accident in the Columbia or, or Connecticut School of Broadcasting. I'm not sure which. Is that you? You even said the name of a trade magazine, which is not the one that we're reading the ad out of. That the ad ran by mistake in that trade. You said what about, that. What about that, Cameron? No, I was just piecing it together from information I received the day before. Was there an ad that ran in the Connecticut School of Broadcasting? Thing? No, no, no. They put out a sheet to their people of potential jobs, and according to CSB, Alex found out for us, according to CSB, they reprint stuff that appears in the on-air tip sheet. Hmm. Oh, okay. All right. So so they took that on-air They took that sheet. wrong information and sent it out to all their people. Oh, all right. Okay. Uh-huh. So, but you do remember when you came down and said the, that an ad a, ran as a mistake. I, I vaguely remember that, yes. Vaguely remember. That's all but, we're going to get. That's, you're our program director. That's as much as we're going to get. That's, that's as much as we're going to And we are not culpable for this, uh, this, this ad. No, and you know, I'm, I'm wondering... None of us are. No, hold on. I think you guys are. You're dopes. You're dopes the way you negotiate contracts. I don't negotiate just like, contracts. Just like, just like you're dopes when you did our contract. I didn't negotiate your contract. <laughs> well, I know because you're worthless because you're a program director. <laughs> All right, at least we're, we're agreed that you don't have anything to do with that process. Because the people who have something to do with that process are dopes. They really are. <laughs> they, they, ah. they screw it up every time. And I don't care what you do with the other disc jockeys, except when I think the other disc jockeys might be giving us the cold shoulder because maybe they got the impression that we said something that turned into this gigantic firestorm when in reality we didn't do it. And as far as I know, nobody on our team, meaning you were the jackass down the hall, went to those guys to say, hey, this is not about Don and Mike. You didn't do that. And I know you've had conversations with Ron and Fez about their contract because you're negotiating it with them now. Well, don't say the universal we. I don't. All right, but you, but you know, seriously. I understand what you're saying. Do you understand what our concern is? I certainly do. And can you do and something? And you understood mine yesterday. But can you do something about our concern now? Okay. About well, about you... the fact that, that that they might be concerned that, uh, that, that this entire ad situation was a result of something said on this show? They, they already know. They already know. They, they already all think know. It's all set. Huh. Really? How do they already know? Because I, I told him yesterday, when I got the email from the tipsy people, I told him it was all a big misunderstanding. All right. So do they know that, do they know that, that you're the dumbass and <laughs> Alan's the dumbass? How exactly are you the dumbass? Well, you, you have to take that bullet. Someone has to be the dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Is these guys' careers, somebody has to be the dumbass. How's that going with them? I mean, you must be aware of how it's going with them, out of curiosity. I mean, they have a lot of fans out here, and I understand they don't, they don't want to talk about it. How would you characterize, uh, and you, you know, you can speak on the record or off the record, or you can, uh, you know, give the uh, Fifth Amendment to I'll, you. I'll, I'll defer to my leader on that. Defer to your leader. Mm. Who's your leader, Alan? Yes. That's a hopeless tribe. <laughs> yeah, a hopeless hey, tribe. You got no, you got no chance. <laughs> You'll ne you're never getting off the island with him. <laughs> He's your fearless leader, Craig. Well, it sounds like you have exonerated us as far as uh, being in any way responsible for this ad. And technically, if this uh, little tip sheet gets their, their information from other websites, then we are exonerated as well. Do you, well. do you have a comment about the other thing, about the thing that's on DCR TV? What thing? What thing? Like you, like you guys don't read that thing every day? I swear I don't.
You're a liar. I swear. You're I'm not going to lie to you. I swear here, to God, here, I don't read that. Here's the deal. At least I said to you the other day about this website, DCR TV. Mm -hmm. I said, I try not to go there. And it's really been my New Year's resolution not to go there. Right. I, I don't need to see like 8 million people writing that our show stinks. And, right. You know, I don't need to see it. But I look at well, it. I'm being replaced. But I look at it. And, you know, it's embarrassing. When Michael Hughes writes stuff to this guy that runs a website telling him that his information, was, which was incidentally about you, right. the guy put on a website that you're getting fired, and the next thing you know, Michael Hughes, who you would think has more important things to do, he's a vice president, he sends an email to the guy at the mm -hmm. website saying, incidentally, I'm not firing Cameron. Uh, it says on there today that Ron and Fez are going to be on in Baltimore mm. after us on Live 105. Hey, you know anything about that? Nope. <laughs> Wouldn't that be exciting? That might indicate that they may have... That's a good question Buzz brings up, Cameron. Wouldn't that be exciting? I think it'd be a great idea. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, they all have different styles, Close but the once best. they get the position, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, they all turn into reptiles, and I mean reptiles. And Cameron, you know, the... you're upholding a great tradition. Thank you. You know, <laughs> you know we, we get the wrap around here, and we're trying to fix this. Trust me, Cameron, we're trying to fix it. We're moving our office downstairs, trying to get things right here. You guys just don't help us. You don't friggin' help yeah, us. Yeah, we need help. Give, you know, us, give us more help, okay? Okay. Seriously. I mean, and how are you going to help us? You, you ask me for help, and it's yours. Well, how are you going to help us? How are you going to help us? How, how are you asking for help? No! Wrong answer! I support you guys 24-7, I don't care about you supporting us. We don't need your support. We, we're self-sufficient. So then you need going. my help. We're moving, we're moving our offices down here. We Inter-office image makeover. Yes! That's how we need help. But what do you we, need my help with? We've discussed it because, because you hold the puppet figure of program director. Yes. Because the people in this building who don't know how things work actually think that you have something to do with the decision process. As you, them. as you have just proven, you have nothing to do with the decision progress process unless that's, you know, again, some scheme that you're conjuring up. Here you go, Cameron. You want a directive? Yes, sir. Here's a directive. Yes. Use all your powers and all your powers of persuasion and all your powers of powers, powers, powers. Powers. To Austin powers. You know, to, uh, you know, help our rap among the employees here. That's what I'm asking you. You know, we, it's done. Anything, anything you can come no, up with. No, listen, here's the thing. We got Not the thing. It's done. It's, uh, you know. We've been through the thing with people with the, the, the don't look at us, don't talk to us, don't make eye contact with us. So we move, we're moving uh, our Incidentally, office. since the whole office thing, I sense that changing. Yes, yeah, so Which I. is good. good. Yeah. So, so now we're moving the office and we're telling people, don't believe what management has told you. You know, I mean, listen. <laughs> and let's not get crazy. You know what I mean? Say hello, but let's let's limit it to that. Right. But, you know, certainly, come on, say hi. Let's get to know people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't need an hour-long conversation. Yeah. Friendly, okay, but not too friendly. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to, you know, we want to reconnect with the people here. If they want to reconnect with us. You know, the people that, that work here. I think they do. I know they do. Ed, well, it's going to be a better, fun place. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be very exciting. Uh -huh. Okay, well, you might want to start with the two guys that are on after us. I mean, cause I don't know what other way to do it than to say it on the radio. Then to say yesterday we spent an hour talking about Ron and Fez and how we thought they were getting screwed over. And how we think you're screwing us over. I turned the radio on. I don't hear a word from them last night. And I guess it's, I, I don't know, because they're still hearing stuff from you guys like... Well, I don't know. Don and Mike are saying on their show you're going to Tampa Bay. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we like that. You know, I think it's fair to give them a, you know, little. But you just tell them we're, you know, you want to, you want to be on the team. We want them to be on the team. God, they don't have to come in and do a friggin' bit with us every day. We don't want that. How about a hello? And the reason that I think that we don't get the hello, besides the, the, the fact that they're working a split shift, mm -hmm. is the fact that they got this thing built into their head. You know, they got this thing built in there that, for whatever reason, you know, we're not behind them. And, and, and that's perpetuated by dopes like you. How do I perpetuate this? By not immediately telling them a month ago that we had nothing to do with any ad going in a trade. I, I think you're thinking too much about it. No one ever said you did. Well, we just if, uh, if the original message can be uh, digested here, it's that we want some help. And, and, and incidentally, it was inferred... We're doing our part. We want you guys to... It was inferred part. yesterday by you and your tribal leader yeah. that the reason that the whole thing got out there was yeah. because we made a comment on our... So, so yeah, Cam, Cameron, it really was. You know so it really don't was. say that. Don't say, well, no, it, it wasn't like that, because it was. I mean, maybe you took care of it last night, but, uh, but okay, prior, that's, that's prior to that. that's a fair point. All right, good. All right, dude. All right. Anyway. All right, uh, have a happy day. How are you feeling about your job? Uh, tentative as always. Tentative as always? Every day. Have you gotten a reassurance? Uh -huh. Have you gotten a vote of confidence? I, yes. All right, good. Really? Good. Who gave good. you a vote of confidence? <laughs> Many of my peers. Really? Who's... Your peers or your, what about your superiors? Them too. 
<laughs> Matthew <laughs> appears <laughs> secondarily. Did Jag come up and say we're, we're yeah, really yeah, behind you? Jag yeah. and Coletta are way behind me. They're good right. people. How long really do you think you'll be here in this job? I don't know. I'm counting the days. You think you'll make it through the uh, through the calendar year? The calendar year? You think you're you think you're going to make it through the year 2004? I do not know. You think there's a Cameron? If I can give you a piece of advice, just uh, on my observations, and certainly with the recent developments in other markets around the country, mm -hmm. don't do your job real, real well. <laughs> if you yeah. just like wallow. According to Don, I don't. If no, but, but well, that's good. That's a good thing then. If you that just wallow, you're gonna, you are gonna get a, You're gonna get. You're gonna get a nice big promotion. Thank Me God. Mediocrity is rewarded around. Then here. I will continue to suck. All right. Then for the, <laughs> all right. Then we will close this issue. Excellent. We're done. We're done with this. With the whole the goddamn thing about the ad. Who needs a drink? <laughs> Me. For the record, what is your name? <sighs> Cameron Gray. <laughs> Might as well go back to the old day. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Cameron. Keep taking your pills. Thank you, Cameron. Goodbye. Goodbye. There he goes. There he is. He, he handled himself as well as can be expected. Uh -huh. Idiot program director. Idiot program director, and I'm trying to think of the name. Oh, it finally came. Hi, to I'm me. Cameron Gray, operations director. There it is. There he is. Cameron Gray. Hello, wow. Rich. Don and Mike show. Here's if Cameron's listening upstairs. These are words I believe that are, are going to make his ears bleed. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. Rich. Yeah. 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 Is it me or with every conversation on the radio that Cameron Gray has, he sounds more and more like a gentleman named Jeremy Coleman? You are. Give him a prize. I was thinking that as we were talking to Cameron, it, it seems, was remarkable. It's harsh. It's very scary. I don't think it's harsh. I know. It's scary. And it's going to mean a lifestyle change. <laughs> oh, <God>. My friend. <laughs> well, because, you know, Cameron is a hard worker and yeah. Jeremy is more laid back. Right, right. exactly. Jeremy enjoys yeah. his time. I, I like Cameron who's in 24 hours a day. Of course. Listen, for identifying that uh, that uh, fact that uh, Jeremy and, and uh, Cameron are very much alike. Very scary. You uh, have won the Sex of the City Part 1 DVD. It's a box set now available on uh, video and DVD Sex of the City, the complete sixth season, Part 1. That's from HBO. And thank you for listening. All right, thanks, guys. All right, thanks. Not that there's anything wrong with being laid back. Yeah. You know, though, you know, seriously, I, I, I look forward, and this is, I, I, maybe I even shouldn't ask for this, but what? wouldn't you love one of them just to, just to, like, scream a little bit, scream and yell a little bit, freak like, out, flip you out? Know, like, yeah. I did it! You're wrong! Don't call me a liar! <laughs> just once. Those, you days that, well, those days are gone. Goodman used to do that. So did Stevens. Once, yep. yeah, once in a paid. while. Yeah, I'm but, not! Yeah, but Stevens... The Stevens thing, really did it. And yeah. I love referring to him now with just his last name. <laughs> He's no longer Ken Stevens. Now he's just Stevens. <laughs> when Stevens was here, you'd have to poke him and prod oh, and him and call him and what bother him. Though? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <but> you're <laughs> really, really. <laughs> I'm okay just uh, mentioning the name. Yeah, yeah it gets you, all, gets you all choked up. The magic of Ken <laughs> Stevens was that if he was a scat... <laughs> God damn, what is wrong with me? Uh-oh, God. <laughs> okay, the legs. Oh. You would... Oh. Pick and pick and oh. pick it, Ken. And, and then finally he would absolutely oh, explode. Better. Yeah, better. that was the magic oh, of it. Oh, here you go. Here's the tape of Ken one time. He's, oh, good. He was just chilling out and telling us he's not, he's not, he's not. And then he finally said... I'm not! That was great. <laughs> That's it. Ken, excuse me, Stevens. I'm not! Stevens out. That was delightful. It was. Stevens losing control. He, <laughs> unlike Gray. Coleman lost control. I'm not! Coleman lost control quite often. Did he really? In yeah. private, though. In private. Yeah. Don't you remember the, the the private? I cannot have you acting like this at my radio station. You know what he would love to do? He loves to throw things. I, you know, I don't think I saw him do that. Oh, I saw him. He was stapler one time. Oh, I saw him really? throw a stapler, too. Yeah. I guess it was handy. You know, I, uh, I never, you know, I was always late. And I was surprised. Yeah. He's kind of like Mr. Burns. I was surprised that he had the strength to pick the stapler up. Smithers, rehydrate me. That was another great one from, from Sunday night. <laughs> Smithers said, I, Burns goes, I will squash over Simpson like a bug. Or Lisa Simpson like a bug. And there was a bug and he tried to squash him. <laughs> he couldn't but he wasn't, he wasn't strong. The bug pushed it. back. Yeah, the bug knocked, yeah. knocked him down. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we, you know what? We need uh, the absinthe guy in here. Yeah. yeah. And th now, th Buzz, this is your buddy. This is Jacob. The, the original absinthe guy. Right. He lives in Prague, Czechoslovakia. Now. And he's brought a supply. Mm -hmm. Met him out in the lobby. Seems like a nice guy. He's got the real stuff. He's got what, like the absinthe light. He's got the stepped on stuff. He's got, he's got regular carb he's got, absinthe. He's got regular absinthe. And he's got my personal favorite, the souped up uh, super ethyl absinthium. Absinthe. Now, now, 
Mike, you don't like the absinthe? Well, that's a, Buzz made that cocktail, and I, I, I just maintain that the first time we tried it. Are we on number three here? Uh, the number the, is this the number three absinthe show? Yes. I yeah, I, I maintain. And it's not a full blown absinthe show, but right? Well, it's a half a one. Try the absinthe yeah. this time. It, well, the pure, try the pure absinthe oh, oh, this right. time. Okay. And he was kind enough to bring me some plum wine. Yeah, very good. Yes, he's just full of booze. <laughs> plum wine. It's very exciting. Brandy, isn't it? Yeah, you're. Oh, forgive me. It is brandy. Where's my mm. plum wine? Plum wine. With my plum wine and my Sam <laughs> Harris album. <laughs> okay, we we got a break. We'll be we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. The world's finest surfers showed up today to do battle with what's turned out to be the biggest waves to hit this coast since 1946. Hello, everybody. I'm Stu Nahan. I'd like you to meet this young man. His name, Jeff Spicoli. And Jeff, congratulations to you. Things look kind of rough out there today. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Stu, I did battle with some humongous waves. But, you know, just like I told the guy on ABC, <laughs> danger is my business. <laughs> you know, a lot of people expect that maybe Mark Cutback Davis or Bob Jungle Death Gerard would take the honors this year. Oh, those guys are fast. The Don and Mike Show. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Yeah, company. Get out of here, Curtis. I don't hear you unless you knock. Hello. Trying desperately to give the human spirit some credit. Don Geronimo and Michael Merrill. What, what was that, that promise that you made? made? Why won't you tell me? What she says. Oh, it's a great one. Promise that you made. I love the Doors. Yeah. And I love the Doors because my dad hated them so much. And when they were on, Ed Sullivan. <laughs> And I remember when they were on doing Touch Me, and they had violins yes. and a cello player, and that pissed my dad off even more. Really? That there was Jim Morrison. What do they need this for? There was Jim Morrison up there, obviously high, got his pants <laughs> pulled down, <laughs> the crack of his butt going, you know, and the way he sang that, where he, where he always looked like he was in a coma. Right, right, exactly. I mean, just absolutely. Holding the microphone. What was that thing. promise that you made? And I'm digging on him like 11 years old, yeah. digging on him. And here's my dad going. Oh, now, what are they doing here? Because the musicians all had short hair. The musicians... How's your microphone, Mike? It's great, Don. What were the musicians all what? The musicians all look like Wendell Hall, our engineer. Short hair. They had very short hair. Is, is there someone who we can help you with that microphone once and for all? No, no, no. I mean, because every day... No, uh, wait, wait, what, what is it? No. Here's the deal. Somebody's Somebody's coming in. And doing a whole day. It's never happened before, but every night, I think it's its its changing. I don't know. Or every day or something. I mean, what is I don't know what's happening. What is the problem? Well, the, right, the problem there was that it had come loose because of a lot of adjusting. And See, uh, there's a cord that goes. That has nothing to do with the cord. It just has to do with this. Well, what is this, though? You that say this is this little screen. pipe that screws into the boom mic and uh, this, the mic stand. Yeah. And it was coming loose, and it was going to fall, and that's why I had to adjust it. So who should... Who, who should not a problem? Who should, who should <laughs> fix it? Nothing I'm going to really worry about. Who should fix it? Hmm? Who should fix it? I know who should fix it. Winner! The man that's out in the lobby. The absent guy? Yeah. yeah okay. Ah, that'll fix All it. right. Bring it. That's up. who's going to fix it. Fix me everything. Bring him in. You know, it's a mic stand, and every day it's like turned into something special. <laughs> Bring in the absent guy, Jacob. No problem at all. <laughs> Boy, you're steamed. I'm I, steamed. You should let it go. Every day, somebody is screwing with this microphone. Every single day. And the problem and it's is the only piece of equipment outside of my headphones and my chair. I have three pieces of equipment, and every goddamn day somebody comes in here and messes around with this. And and again, for those who can't see what you're doing with your, I'm hands, playing with the boom this, mic right this here. This is what microphone. you're talking about. What? When that particular this? time, because there's been, and it's still not quite right. It's just uh, you know, it, it, I was worried that it was going to fall because it's been. Jerry rigged I got so many you. times, but now I'm fine. I just okay. got that off my chest. Okay, no, You're right. I was a little. I'm steamed. glad you did. I was a little steamed. I'm glad you got it off your chest. You know, I mean, I am a lot of things at this radio station, but one thing when it comes to the technical aspect of doing this program, mm -hmm. yes, I am not a demanding person. I do not require a lot. No, you need a comfortable chair. You comfortable need a microphone. chair, microphone, and my headphones working. I'm done. I'm it. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't need a computer. 
I don't need anything. I, you know, I, uh, uh, what, seven years ago I asked for a telephone that, that doesn't work. I can't make outgoing phone calls on it. That's okay. I don't, I don't even, I don't even complain about that. That's all right. I didn't know your phone didn't work. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. I can't. Well, no, I mean, it, on the, on the, uh, you know, on the, on the 444 line, yeah. when I normally, you know, make phone calls out, I don't think I can do that anymore. Oh, hmm. well. Here. And I think that's been... You I'm know, very uh, sorry about that. That's okay. And I'm sorry about your microphone. How often do I make a phone call, outgoing phone call, when I'm in the studio? Never. Not so much. Uh, okay. Well, but, uh, so it's not a big deal, so I don't even complain about but that. But the microphone is a big deal. The microphone's number one. Okay. You know, and you know what I do? I mean, I, I'm constantly doing little adjustments Adjust. on it and stuff, and I need a little, it's got to have a little play in it, a little flexibility. Look there you at go. That. There's the guy with the bottles. Uh -huh. Look I think at you that. came at the right time, my friend. And now, you, where are you from? Prague? Yeah, I'm living in Prague, Czech Republic. <laughs> living in the Prague. I like the music. Living in Prague, Bill. Look at all these different colors. Now, this yeah. guy's name is Jacob. Buzz, how do we know this guy, Jacob? Well, Jacob uh, emailed and also sent us and, and mailed to us some bottles of absinthe. We did it before, and he's brought more with him today. Now, you've got uh, How many several different, different bottles there, right? I've got two different kinds here. I've got the Absinthium 1792, and oh, then oh, yeah. the one that's exclusive for our website that Mike liked a lot was the uh, Green Fairy. And now the Green Fairy is uh, is the goods, in, as far as I'm concerned. Now, what is what is your website, Jacob? It's uh, www.greenfairy.org. Now, is this legal to, to order the stuff in the United States? Yeah, as long as you're ordering it from outside of the United States. Yeah, it is legal to uh, order it outside the United right. States. You just Mike is you clutching that the way Susan Lucci clutches her Emmy Award. You can't. And a nicer bottle, a little more modern bottle than the uh, last bottle you sent with this yeah, stuff. Change bottles. Um, it's it's a bit of a smaller size, but. Um, All right now, what what about the stories I've heard? Goes a long way. What about the stories I've heard, Jacob? That if you take this absinthe, you drink it, like you're killing your brain cells at 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 an at an incredible rate. Like ecstasy laughs at you because you're killing so many brain cells by drinking this. And can you really go mentally? crazy? crazy by drinking absinthe well you might cut off your ear but uh no it's, it's yeah and, and those are the old days when it had the wormwood cause well it like, still actually has worm in it yeah. these both of these have quite a bit um compared to most of the other absinthe now who besides marilyn manson is famous for drinking this van gogh um picasso oh, um, no rob it's mine napoleon <laughs> you can't mike why are you really you're grasping onto that like you were grasping make onto real, the microphone. I want to make it real clear to everybody in this studio that of all those bottles there, this little this sucker right here. May is I nice. see it for a moment? I, pro I swear to God, I'll give it back to you. I'll, I'll let Rob see it first because Rob wanted to see it, and then you can uh -huh. bring it this over. This must be why you like it so much. No, no, that's actually the stuff that we had in here the, that one time. That one time that it was a little goofy in here. And the other time... It's a new bottle. It's a new bottle. Mm -hmm. now, we, now, of all these bottles that you brought, uh, right. Jacob, which one is, is the most potent? Which one is the... The one that will just knock you on your ass like like absinthe should. The one I get the one I gave to Mike. It's the bingo. It's the the thank you. It's it's quite a bit stronger than the absinthe. Buzz, you know, buzz, I think buzz. There are a few Mike. things I know. There are a few things I know. Uh huh. That I know. So you only brought one okay. bottle. You only brought one bottle of the high octane stuff. Yeah, because everybody else said they liked the absinthe better. So okay, okay, Jacob, let me ask you this: It's stronger how? It's stronger in alcohol or stronger in thujone? Well, actually, both. Um, it's got seventy-three percent alcohol. What? what is thujone? The thujone is the Thujon? active ingredient, the THC-like ingredient in wormwood. Thujone. Thujone. T h u j o n e. Let me see if there's actually any wormwood in that bottle, because in the in the other one there was some wormwood. Yeah, there's no. Is there? This one doesn't go. Doesn't have. Oh, jam. Okay. Thujon. But absinthium is, is high in thujon and, and tastes better, I think. Yeah, the absinthium is also high in thujon. It's it's not as high as the Cujo. Cujo. <laughs> From Entertainment Tonight. Cujo. Cujo. Now, Rob. Cujo. Rob uh, oh, no. Cujo is a scary guy. <laughs> Cujo is from Entertainment Tonight. Somebody brought in some sugar, and you have these little wacky spoons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the whole ritual with the spoons? Because, you know, it's it's interesting. Well, there's there's actually two. There's the way the Czechs drink it now, which is with fire and sugar. and Fire and sugar? Yeah. They explain. They, uh, they have a, a slotted spoon like this, and yes. they put a sugar cube on top of it. Then they dip the sugar cube in the absinthium or the absinthe, uh -huh. and they light it on fire. They let it caramelize. It drips down into the absinthe, stir it, and then shoot it. Why? Why would you caramelize it? I mean, you caramelize it. So you're, you're really melting the sugar is what you're doing. Yeah, right? just dissolve so the, the sugar dissolves. Because it, it's very bitter. The, the regular, the regular yeah, absinthe the one is bitter. one Mike has is incredibly bitter. So Mike, could you open that one up and, and just give me a little bit of it? Uh, sure, please. Yes. I mean, if... What Mike has now, Buzz. Mm -hmm. Give me the argument why you, why your stuff is better than what no, Mike the guy. Has. He's just settled the argument, right? 
That's true. Uh, yeah, the, the, stuff the that, argument is no longer an argument. The stuff that Mike has now in his hand is stronger, apparently, both in alcohol and in, in Thujon or in I have a theory, wood. and I don't mean to, you know, impugn the integrity of uh, sure my, my distinguished colleague across the, the hallway. Uh -huh. But I'm going to tell you that I believe that uh, when he brought in that concoction that he made, uh, he saved the good stuff. For no, himself. Actually, just the opposite. I wanted to bring the good stuff, and there was so little of it, I tried to stretch it, expand it by adding oh. regular... So, so the, when you say the good stuff, it's this green fairy stuff? Well, I know. To me, the good stuff is absinthium because it tastes better. Oh, okay. So it's a flavor so issue. I added, yeah. So I added yeah, regular. Be a long way with booze. I added what you have now. Why don't we get some pink squirrels in here? Huh? To the absinthium. How about some brandy Alexanders? Yeah, that'll How be about fun. a mint julep? Sure Give some... me an apple martini. Sure someone heard me. <laughs> I heard you, Buzz. <laughs> I listen to you, Buzz. I hear what you... I have headphones on. Yes, I, I hear it. I hear everything. I can see that. Trust me. I hear everything. Left channel, right, right channel. channel. It's like Wayne's World. Left camera, right camera, <laughs> left camera, right camera. It's very well sealed, I'll tell yes. you that. And why is this drink so popular, Jacob? I guess because it uh, has a much of a much different effect than regular alcohol. Mm -hmm. And clear-headed drunkenness and some creativity and are and are, are you a, a, a big player in the absinthe market oh the biggest you are the biggest no no, no. you're the donald trump of of, ab, of absinthe i'm gonna open no, up no, this no. little sucker now here we go all right mike go ahead ah there you go well wow. how does it smell from a very <laughs> i talked into the bottle <laughs> i really didn't i haven't yeah. had any yet <laughs> a very you know I, would it be like anything else you either like the stuff or you don't. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. exactly. And you know what? Uh, it's just it's got a very warm smell to it. Yeah, but you it do, really does. You do warm up to it. I mean, the first time I had it, since I couldn't even drink it. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, now I love it. And yeah. the first time I, I had it with your cornflakes, what? <laughs> I do. The first time I had it, I, I mean, out of the bottle, I liked it. Right. Okay. Well, the decision is this. Um, do we want to get there to that point today? On well, I, I mean, there's not that much time left in the show, but I, really not. I see no reason why we can't have a we taste. Have a, so we little. have a little toast. I would like to do one thing. I would like to see him prepare it Yeah, like they prepare it, and I think we all ought to try... What do you think? This stuff? The absinthe, sure. Because this is the bitter stuff. That's you... the one you're going to need the sugar for. Okay. Well, but, but, but I drank this without sugar. Have a sip of it now. Jacob, would no, you... I mean, over ice is what I mean. Okay. I, liked it, I liked it chilled. All right. <laughs> try that. Okay. Well, Buzz, that, that, no, are, you think, are you challenging I, me? No, I just think Mike needs to taste it without sugar and also with sugar. I've had Hold this on. at my house. Hold on. Okay. I have a bottle oh, of the drinking. Green Fairy oh, at my okay. house. Hold on. Right. I'm sure the warden's on the phone. Hello? Hello, Mr. Drinking Alone and now Drinking On Air. Hi, honey. I'm just going to have a taste uh, of it. No, I remember, I mean, until recently, you never did this little on-air exper experiment. <laughs> now it's been, what is this, like the, it's the a regular third time? Bit. It's the third time. This is yeah. the third time, but I've never gotten no, it's wasted. technically the second time for you. For, for me, it's only the second. Yeah. I didn't do it the first time. It'd be the third time for me. And, uh, Frida, I think the only reason we're doing this, these shows have been very highly reviewed. No, I, I, I disagree. I don't, I I don't want to get uh, bad. bad reviews on the second drinking show in which... What about if Don, what if Don puts yeah. a blindfold on? If, if, <laughs> if my husband doesn't drink, if you have somebody... Yeah. Honey, listen, I'm, yeah, I'm, I had no... Then it's good. Okay, listen. Listen to me. I have a sip. I'm going to get bombed. No one's going to get bombed today. I, you know, I'm I'm large and in charge. I, I just think this is, a, you know, first of all, it's the drinking by yourself every night. I don't want to, you hold know. On. I, hold on. If we're going to discuss alcohol, let's remember, oh, this tape. Two teams. Can we lie? Can we fill in 15? No. All right. No, no, no. All right. No, all right. I don't even remember what it was. No. I got hiccups. That's you, darling. Uh, you know why? The, you know why I had the hiccups after two drinks because I don't drink regularly. Right, I do. I know. <laughs> I, and now I you're do. drinking on air regularly. You know what's Sometimes. great? What's great is this is just kind of a familiar thing hey, that you used to have when there was nudity on this. Did show. you hear about <laughs> Buzz pushing his wife off the ladder? <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz, I'm kidding. I'm just no, oh no, it's fine. No. I'm but I'm just I, kidding you, Buzz. I know. I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around my sweet Buzz doing something no, like that. He, no, no, he, he did not. He, it, was, it was an accident. He absolutely he, did not. We're, we're kidding he, him. He fell. And she's fine. Huh? <laughs> now, okay. Hey, all right. right. I'm, 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 I'm willing to give Buzz the benefit of the doubt. If it had been you. one of you other guys, you, you'd be guilty. 
All right, mommy. Well, I'll 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 be a good boy. I love you. I'll I see you later. Don't drink, my darling. Really. I'll see you. Love you. Really, really. Since you don't have the the naked girls anymore, this seems to be like your new outlet. <laughs> you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need. We need. It something. might be the new outlet mall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let let the other guys do that, and you you uh, drive God. the ship. Whip, whip, whipped. I am whipped, whipped, whipped. I think you know. The truth is. Okay, honey, I love you. The truth is, I'm right. The truth is, I love that's, you. That's why you don't want to hear it. All right, CP. I love All you. right. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. I'd like to borrow my ladder. <laughs> oh, Buzz. That was Buzz. Wow. No, you know, see, what she's all she's repeating is stuff that I've said to her. Uh -huh. and that really, what I really think, is, you know, we can't all get bombed because right. then the show really it just yeah. goes to hell. Oh, I, apart. I, I, I disagree. <laughs> well, go ahead. Have a sip. Tell us how it is, Mike. I didn't even plan to get bombed. I'm just gonna have a toast. Right. I can have a toast. Give me a toast. All right. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna yield to you. Uh -huh. It's a little bitter. But he's going to do the sugar thing, and wow. that, I believe, this is more Marcus. bitter than the, the last one I had. The last one seems, re really. You yeah. know, why would that be? Jacob? Oh, hold on, Jacob. What's There's, that? Did you make what? Did you drink something else before? I don't know, but you're absolutely right. This is so bitter. Mm -hmm. You can't, you, it's really hard to drink without sugar. Right. It, you know, but boy, we, maybe that's the stuff we drank the last the first time. That's why I like the absinthium. All right, maybe I'm wrong. Now, are, now, are you, I, now, you, now you're, now you're going to ping, you're going to ping pong back yeah. the other way with Buzz now yeah, because this is not the stuff that I drank the very first time. Then when Buzz brought in the concoction, uh -huh. which was the second time, right? That was a mixture of absinthium and absinthe. I don't know. I don't know. It's, I'm having trouble remembering. The good news is, is now that you agree with Buzz, you're safe to climb a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> no accidents for Mike. But, but you know what? Hey, I'm not even drinking that because it's, it does need the sugar. Yeah. Do you agree that it needs the sugar? Yeah, I, I can't drink it without sugar. Okay. Now, right. we, we'll like it better with the sugar? Oh, yeah. It's, good. It's All right, well, Jacob, uh, prepare a toast, please, yeah. and we're going to go to break. Okay, and will you have one with the, with the sugar? I, I'll let you know, Mike. Okay. It, you can see, I look like it. I look Just do me a favor. Don't do the thing where, like, you pick up the glass and then... You don't? Because well, I did that the first time, and I did that even without my wife. I wish my wife wouldn't call in. I think really. You know, because here's the thing. Are you listening, Frida? <laughs> I would just take it a toast. Now you made me look like less than a man. Now I have to drink. Let's see what you made me do. See what you made me do. <laughs> Get up on that ladder. Well, that's, now once again, it's another great tease. We're going to see what the result of this is after the commercial. Oh, I'd like the Diana the, the Gormo thing. Or the, that the that hundred dollar bet stands to see. Uh, I I pick Fantasia, you pick Diana. Right, and, and I, I think, think I'm taking your money. I think Diana's got a better chance of winning than I do of getting drunk today. <laughs> I mean that. And what is your? It, it's Jacob. Mm -hmm. Jacob, uh, so Jacob, you're, you're sitting in here in the middle of all this. It's pretty thrilling, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> very, very exciting. Very exciting watching the show happen. The, uh, the this is where the magic happens. The moment Jacob. by moment progression. Can right. you feel the energy? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I feel it. Can you smell the bo? It smells great. It's in here. <laughs> now, Mike, you're having more of the unadulterated, unfiltered stuff. Yeah. I'm and bitter. I'm bitter. <laughs> you're bitter. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna break. Jacob, if you would go and uh, do the, 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 you know, the thing that flips me about uh, about this is like the burning of the spoon. Yeah. It's like doesn't that? It's like what Christopher does on the Sopranos. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. But the thing is, is, Christopher doesn't do it with a styrofoam cup. Right. No, exactly. No. Okay. He'll just make it sweeter. Well, helps, go, helps the medicine. Go, go down. prepare your concoction. Go prepare it. We've not yeah, even... give me a, give me some sugar. We've not even... Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is on ice already. No no need to ruin it. Can I see some uh, sugar there? Thanks so much. Oh, so you're just going to put your own sugar? Or is that... Is that the, what kind of sugar do we have over there? Is that the regular pour kind? Yeah, that'll make it go quicker. <laughs> a little commercial break coming, right? <laughs> All right, yeah, so Mike is going to just do, uh, sugar it up himself. Right. Oh, sugar. Oh, honey, mm -hmm. honey. Think? Yeah. <laughs> All right, there you go, Mike. Right. You just put a hell of a lot of sugar in there. I did. You that ready? Makes the medicine. Oh, I'm not going to chug it. Uh, I'm going to nurse it during the commercial break that's coming. Well, w would you start nursing now? I would, yeah, I need a spoon. Just to, otherwise, I'm going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be like a uh, use your finger. All right. <laughs> Hey, you're getting really. You're looking forward to this, aren't you? I <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. this. This is the yeah. third time. Yeah. It's the third time in two weeks. <laughs> no, it's been longer than that. Yeah, no, in three weeks. Yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah, a month. month. Let's see what the sugar does. Month this tops. Time. Makes it better, doesn't it? Yeah, usually there's a bit of water, though. Give it a try, Mike. Okay, let's see. And? What do you think, Mike? <laughs> I'd say yes. <laughs> uh, no. Oh, oh. No, all I heard was a... <laughs> it was almost like a shemp, 
<laughs> Maybe it was that absinthium buzz was talking about. What did Shem do? Do the Shem thing? <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. what it was. Well, I'm going to try to make this taste good. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. A bitter cold night. The Giants with a victory against the Eagles tonight could reduce the edge to a half a game. Not on camera now. We're in Philadelphia at Franklin Field. The score, the New York football Giants 13, the Philadelphia Eagles 9. Who's on absence? <laughs> Howard Cosell on absence. Howard. Wow. That? The Don and Mike Show. Well, now, hold on. There's got to be more than just a dog. Yeah. Like dude the, uh, drinking absinthe? I don't know. D a dude lager? Be a deer and listen to the Don and Mike show. There you go. Um, my wife embarrasses me so much. She really does. I mean, I love her. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I thought that now the nudity was gone. I was past yeah. the point of her calling in and ordering me and yelling me at, at me to do something. Yeah, I'm not because sure where that came from. Because the truth is... What are you, you've been slopping around the house a little bit or what, you know, like knocking over furniture or what, uh, you know? What do you mean? Yeah, you, you, you don't fancy yourself a problem drinker, do you? Um, I have no problems drinking. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. No, no. I just I don't know where that came from. That surprise me because, because, uh, because I always... Surprised and annoyed me. It, it, it's because <laughs> you continue to drink. <laughs> because, uh... I've always prided myself at large and in charge, and frankly, part of this drink scares me a little bit. Scared me before we well, had it. Let me tell you what scares me. They, we were making that big deal about the fact that I drank this one stuff, and then what I tasted was something totally different. And now I'm drinking the stuff that doesn't taste the same as And I think I, I drank the Buzz stuff last night. Anyway, uh, it was not my intent. I, I knew that Jacob was coming by today. He's been waiting Jacob for a couple not, hours. You know, there are a lot of people here, like, during the commercial breaks, that, you know, you get a little hinky about. Jacob's a very cool guy. Yeah, and nice. a font of information about this uh, this mm -hmm. stuff. Amen. Great and and the Prague, studio, where, where he informs me the women are ugly. Except your fiancé, right? No, no, he was... Except. I'm joking. He no. said the women over there apparently are very, very strong. And that's beautiful. where you met your fiancé? Your girlfriend? I haven't. I... No, I just stayed around a bit. Oh, you did? Oh. Not good for you, Jacob. Okay. You know, I walked in late on the conversation. I thought that... Now, he was saying that, in, and I've heard this from other people, that in Prague, uh, Prague's women are very... Are, are known throughout the world. Astoundingly beautiful. It's like the Manassas, Virginia of mm -hmm. that part of the world. That's right. Because there are beautiful women throughout Manassas, Virginia. Absolutely. Many, anyway. of, uh, many of whom will be at uh, O'Mara's tonight. Okay. Because now, it's ladies' night. Now I really know that that is good stuff. <laughs> Hank's Look Around Cafe. As as I will, too. <laughs> yes, sir, oh. I'm done. This brings back such good memories. Anyway, Buzz, Jacob, uh, Mike, uh, let's bring in Joe and uh, and uh, Alex Jimenez. What is the... Uh, what is the final decision that you made? Are you going to have a sip or two? No, and I and I really wasn't going to before the show today either. Mm. It's just, I hate the fact that my wife... Now it's turned into a game of chicken with my wife. Ah. I, I knew Jacob was well, going to come I think, in. Really, you're not drinking it, but you ought, to, you ought to have a taste just to see what it tastes like. I can smell it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ought to taste it. And Hefe's coming in here, and Joe Ardinger. I can smell it when I walked in. Hello, the... Alex. Alex, is Hefe the, the name you're going by on the show now? Or is it still just <laughs> Alex? Oh, what is hey. that for me? Yeah, no, it's chicken, because you're playing a game of chicken. Oh, I see. Mm. I thought that was for me. Nobody was no. calling you a chicken no, for, for not drinking. No, no. You were. I didn't say anything. Did I, you hear me say that? No. We, I'll play the Cameron Gray game here. But I get to see your face, though, Mike. Well, you ought to just have a taste. Why do I have to have a taste? You don't. Listen, you don't have to. I don't care about my wife. No, you don't. You don't. And, and no one's going to think if you don't that you're not having a taste because your wife browbeat you into it. No, that's crazy talk. That's silliness. God damn you. <laughs> God damn you. No, you know who's saying that right now is if your wife's listening, she's cussing me out right now. <laughs> this is this is like this is the you look up peer peer group pressure in the dictionary. I know. They have my picture of it in here. Anyway, you guys have been lighting it like heroin and uh and and, and drinking it. Now do we have some for well, Jacob did here. Jacob explained that he uh, just poured ice cold water over the sugar, which makes it dissolve, and then it's about uh, one third absinthe to uh, to th two thirds water, uh, water, mm -hmm. and uh, and you sip it. You don't. It's not a shot. You don't knock it back. Oh, I want to say for okay. the record, it was never my intent to have the drink today. Exactly. Yeah, although my wife does made me look awful. 
Now I have to have it just to show her. Well, you don't have to have the whole thing. You just have no, a little set. You don't have to get drunk. You and you only have it, knock face. it all back if you like it. I Alex, think that's, uh, Alex and Joe, go ahead and have some. I think her only concern was that you got drunk. If you don't get drunk, you should be fine. Now, come on. Where are you? Don't this one. Yeah, I'll take that one. Thank you. Oh, you having another one? Mike? Yeah, I'm going to have the one he made. Alex, Joe, what do you guys think? You smelling it? Alex, what, what do you think? That's better. I'm getting a little whiff. Uh, I'm a little worried, though, because i got to be up real late. How how bad is this going to mess me up? You'll be fine. Oh, um, on how old are you? 26. Come on. You'll be fine. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, baby. Yes? I'm getting I'm getting incredible peer pressure. Now, here's the thing. Here's where you kill me today by calling in. And I love you calling in the show. You can call in on any topic you want. And I love her calling the show, too. Um, I do. You're happy now. I do. Um, and, and, you know, on a, le on a level that is totally platonic, I'm very fond of you. But voice. you undermine me. You undermine me as as a man with my male friends by immediately calling and saying, "No, you can't do that." When I had no intention of doing it, I'm simply going to take a uh, sip. I'm sure you fooled me and fooled everyone else. You know, friends and listeners that you were going to do it. So how are we supposed to know you're only kidding? Now, who? Did, wh when did I make the grand proclamation that Had I? Had your wife? Have you brought home any of this stuff no. ever before? No, because ah. uh, uh, Jacob gave you something to bring home, and I hope your wife gets a chance. To have try I? It. You know, no, did I start the show today by saying the absent guys come in? And, Boy, I'm going to drink it. I'm going to get loaded. I'm going to get have, have fun. No, and you didn't say that. No, you didn't, but you didn't tell me when you ate bugs. I mean, just because you didn't say it doesn't. What I got to run everything by you, mommy? I'm not saying that you do. You're just saying, did you say that? And I said no. But you don't tell me a lot of things. I don't ask you to run things by me. Okay, well, so now, you, just so you understand, it is my decision not to get hammered on the show. But now you have you, you have forced my hand. I'm going to have to take a sip. Well, that is childish. Well, That's got, the most got, childish thing you could do. Just a taste? Well, now, how do you... How do you know that I'm not holding up a, a, a diet of v vanilla Coke? Oh, dear, I've spilled a drink. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you God. asking me how I, how I know? So you don't know. I've spilled yes, something here. I don't here. know. Don't I don't know. know anything you do, and you don't know anything I do. Thank I you. mean, when we're not looking at each other. Thank you, Alex. What a grand argument this is. But that's Baby, that's well, what what, where's your, what's your position for you on Don just having a little taste? Well... You know, he can do whatever he wants. He's a grown man. He'll do the thing that he thinks is right without my input. You know, this, has a, this has a bit of an odor to it. That's where the guilt it. comes yeah. in. He can do it's whatever he tough. wants. Nice. Just he'll do what's right. And I will do what's right because I'm, 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 I'm a good guy. You're a grown man it's with a wood. fine head on your shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. Just, That's right. I just, uh, you know, uh, just I don't, with uh, a developing drinking problem that I'm not really concerned all that much uh, about. When did the problem develop? Five years ago? The drinking uh, problem? It seems to be escalating, but, yeah, that's all right. How does I mean, it seem to be escalating? How? Yes. Because... Am I, am I falling down drunk? No, you are usually sleeping. And about what so time? you don't fall down, you snore. Oh, and that's, why I do, and that's why I'm sleeping every night, because I have a drink? No, and I know the size of your drink. You don't, you know... No, I, no, I use that... I am not hey, 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 hey. I use that Andy of Mayberry shot glass you got. All right, very good. All okay. right, and I'm sure, and then, and then I'm she sure used, you're just fine. Of course, two shots. <laughs> I, of course, I make it with a double. Mm -hmm. I make a double. But she, listen, I'm ultra high functioning. What do you, wait, wait a minute, wait. How many, how many a night do you have? One. I have one drink a night. Not every night, but mm -hmm. I'll give you five nights out of seven. I have a drink. Mm -hmm. Not and every it, night. Not every night. Five out of seven. When's the last night you didn't? Um, Monday night. That would be Monday night. Well, that's surprising. I should have noticed. Why? Why should you have noticed, because, Inspector Clouseau? Because I mean, it's pretty regular. So I would. Have, I'm surprised I didn't notice that Monday night you did not. Mm -hmm. and why didn't you Monday night? Any particular reason? I didn't feel like it. Well, very good. Didn't right. feel like it. All right. Well, well, well then I'm having trouble buying that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. This this uh, this stuff. The uh, absence um, talking. Frida. Yeah. Let me share this with you. <laughs> this uh, this stuff makes you feel unbelievably relaxed, and uh, nothing really phases you. It's Happens. obvious I've not had any yet. <laughs> okay, I'm like the most relaxed guy in the room. Cause my mommy has to call up to say, don't do this, when I really wasn't going to do it anyway. Sugar Bear, you give me advice all the time. That's all I was doing. And then, and then I well, let Buzz, it go. Just say it, Buzz. Don't so, solicit it. I mean, you, you ask, right? You just say it with Buzz. Buzz is funny, especially when Buzz has had a drink. No, right. Buzz is urging me on, and he's going, 
<laughs> yeah. What just say it? Okay. Solicit. Solicit. You, 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 you ask for the advice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know we've all. Worked I to... often do ask for advice, but he often gives me unsolicited advice. Oh, I see. <laughs> if you were here, I bet you'd be joining in with us, though. Here. <laughs> oh, well, sure, funny. because I wouldn't be working. Well, but uh, you see, this is. In some circles, considered entertaining. You know what? This, here's the thing. Okay, Ed McMahon. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Hey, come on. No, no personal attacks. I know, but that you know, but most people, even if it's entertainment, they don't drink unless the rock stars are Ed McMahon. I could call you. I don't know which rock star to call you. I mean, uh, you know, um, uh, honey, lots, off. lots of people what? drink. Not just rock stars. Lots of people. When drink. they're working. Yes. Yes, go to Sears. Go to Sears someday. So, do you think that's a good idea? Lots of people beat their wives. Do you think that's a good idea? No, uh, don't. Let's not go down that road. Rob, 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 is, Rob, Rob is, stop applauding. Rob's <laughs> applauding that. No, of course. I don't beat you. I of course you don't. I raise my hand to you. I love you. Just because a lot of people do something doesn't mean and it's, it's good. not like I drink every day on the show. That's what Ed did. <laughs> right. That's exactly <laughs> right. Wait, shouldn't you be working and not calling? Sugar Bear, I'm very busy uh, buying something for my mom on eBay right now. I didn't call you. You called me. I know, but you called me before. You called me well, first. I, was, I, I, had to, I was on my way home from you the Depot. Me, you called me. Now I feel like we're all being disciplined. Let me just say, fellas, cheers to you. To you guys. And, and darling, to you as well. Well, you know, I don't know why you called me to rub my nose in it. I tell you, it's not a good idea. I wouldn't have even heard it if you had done it. There you go. All right. Well, it's done now. It's done now. Oh, tip. my God. What am I going to do? I can't control the show. <laughs> okay. It's done. All right. All right. Love you. Yeah, I, I love you, too, and I still respect you. You what? I respect you. She respects you. No, that means she doesn't respect me. <laughs> but I, I've learned to live with that. All right. Good. That's one of the trade-offs in this marriage. I've learned to live with your lack of respect for me. I think me. anybody listening now would describe what we're hearing <laughs> as a power struggle. <laughs> yes. And I love you and I respect you. I do. My respect for you has grown immeasurably over the past, you know, over the time we've been married. And, and, there, and, and likewise. And set back. I'm sure it'll grow some more tomorrow. Okay. Listen, if you if you really want an insight to what my read, read really like between the lines here, yeah, yeah, this is these are the mind games that she plays with me. I mean, like every day, <laughs> not about something stupid like drinking on the radio. It's She's like, much more subtle with you. In in my case, she just called me a name. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that, Mike. Mike, you you know you uh, you only said it was so. Uh, I was saying kind of in the way that you were saying that it's okay to drink at work, and I would right. say it only I Ed McMahon. I right. Understand. Right, so you're worried, you're worried about his feelings. My feelings, you trample all no over. No offense taken. It's just a little setback. <laughs> well, Mike doesn't need my respect, darling. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't even try for it. <laughs> you're right about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Okay. Oh, this is right. fun. This is right. fun. You know, when we've had occasions to go out socially, this is what it's like when like, Frida and I are together sure. socially, yeah. too. So that's fun. Absolutely. All right, darling. All right, Hap. Enjoy yourself, my baby. I'm done with it. I did what I was going to do. I did my post. That's it. I'm not out of my mind. If you think that's the right thing to do, very good. <laughs> well, yes, it, it is the right thing to do. All right. You're I also right. thought it was the right thing to do for Buzz to push his wife off that ladder last night. <laughs> no, I, I didn't push. But I'm kidding, of course. Of course. Of course All I'm right. kidding. Goodbye. Have right. fun. Goodbye. Goodbye. Have fun on eBay. There she goes. Bye-bye. <laughs> you know, as Charlie Ridge would say, hey, did you, you happen to see the most beautiful girl in the world? Ah. Jacob, um, are you are you happy that you've caused all this today? <laughs> I'm thrilled. Thrilled. He's thrilled. He's, so. thrilled. He's thrilled. He's a mellow dude. All yeah. right, Jacob, you got to get out of here now. we gotta, we got to do the show. <laughs> all right. uh, have Jacob, fun. And, thank you very, very much. Have fun in Prague. Thank you for listening to the show every day. When do you go back to Prague? On the second, I'm going up to Boston next to do a uh, absent party for a Boston newspaper. Okay, very uh -huh. good, wonderful. Well, you're, thanks, you're the man. Thanks for the real stuff. Yeah, and yeah, uh, you know, thanks for the real stuff. You got anything you want? Are we allowed to have him plug anything or, or not? What's your website? 
Uh, my website is uh, www.greenferry.org. There you go. Good guy. All right, go there. Good guy. And you, you, this is a friend of yours, right? Absolutely. I consider him so, yes. There you go. Greenferry.org. Yeah, it's almost like Donnie Brasco. A friend of, he's a friend of yours? He's a friend of ours. He's mm -hmm. a friend of ours. There Remember you go. that. Forget about it. Thank you. Yeah. Get yeah. out of here. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, Thanks, Jacob. Go. We learned a lot. What, how many bottles are you getting, Mike? Yeah, I'm just getting two. Just hey, a little two. And, uh, uh, Jacob, I'll get you my uh, my email address, and we'll, we'll communicate, oh. you and me. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Abe. Thank you, Jacob. Very nice meeting you, Jerry. Take Jacob. care. Go make that trip to Prague. Good luck in Prague. You and me, pal. That's it. Good luck in Prague. We're off. We'll okay. See you later. That's uh, that's it. We've got the uh, we've got the stuff. It's the absinthe show, but it's it's the absinthe show like we planned. Mike, what? How you doing? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> see now, Frida, no, are you fine. listening? I'm fine. I'm fine. This is what I like. I like being in control and having Mike like he is when we go out. This, for me, is fun. Amen, brother. Especially yeah. when you do that thing, when you point at me like you just did. <laughs> Amen. Like that, hey, baby. Amen. That showbiz thing, baby. Absolutely. Because it's you, baby. That's right. It's all about you, baby. It's fantastic. And I think everything worked out for the best. So do I. Hi, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hello. Oh, turn the radio down, please. please. I did. I did. Yes. But all I, all I got to say is... I gotta hand it to you. Your wife and you are gonna last for a long time, Don. Yes, I know. The reason for that is because Frida wants it that way. I, uh, here's another guy. Okay. Oh, with, you know what? With the, That's and then rot. And then go ahead and hang up, dummy. There are ways like, you can do that and ways you can't. You know what? I'll tell you. For those of us that are on the other side, <laughs> you know, how many how many years you've been married? 124. 124. 124. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hey. Hello. Mike, don't pull your fists up. Yeah, yeah buddy. Pop that. Hello. Go you're ahead, Paul. You're on the air. Uh, thanks very much. Hey, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you see Johnny Depp turn into a vapid, uh, uh, burned out waste case from that ass and stuff in that movie from hell? What was the, oh, the movie from hell? From hell. Is that what he was doing? Yeah, he, he was all messed up. He fell in love with Heather Green, but he couldn't. That was about Jack the Ripper. Jack that was about Jack the Ripper, but wasn't he, that uh, a heavier narcotic? Yeah, he was. Well, he was so locked up in that stuff all the time that he couldn't get to Heather Green in time well, to he save didn't, her. Well, he Jack's didn't just have it and, once every three weeks on his radio show. But wasn't the story buzz that this stuff, like that, with some of the movies are based on the fact that this stuff had certain properties that really whacked people out in, in the day? In the olden days, it was made with really bad moonshine, and that poisoned people, and that's what made them insane. This product doesn't do that. This what? It, this product. <laughs> it, it, how's Jeremy Piven doing, Buzz? <laughs> He's my favorite actor, that Hello. Jeremy Piven. Don and Mike show. Hello. <laughs> uh, I'm like, hey, why let you know that Martha Stewart is actually, this is a true story, she has a huge collection of absent spoons. She's a big collector. Oh, cool. Yeah, I bet she. Oh, I, I, I kid you not. I kid you not. Oh. Thank you. Hello. She collected the bottle. She'd be more interested. Maybe she'd be able to bring him to prison with her. Hello. Oh. Yeah, I call him Don and Mike. Yeah, you're, you're talking to us. Hello there. Hey, guys. I'll tell hey. you, if you're going to be partying with your boys here, you can't have your wife involved. It's like taking your wife to a football game or to a poker match. Hey, or hey, a club. hey. I, buzz kill, Don. Come on. Get with the program. Buddy. Hey, it's a buzz kill. Hey, first off, I do take my wife to a football game. My wife has been to a strip club. And third, all the other guys are getting drunk. Dude, I didn't want to even though my wife said not to. Get off my ass. Hey. Hey, hey it's Buzz. Mike, you guys got it going on. Yeah. Too bad Don can't party with you properly. Yeah, you're, re you're a real man. How about Rob? Rob, how come you're not drinking, Rob? Well, because I'm a pussy, Don. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you're not, Rob. Hello. <laughs> Don and Mike's show. No, you are not. Hello. Don't let anybody hey, tell you that. <laughs> Just another word for designated driver. Right. Hello, Don and Mike's show. Come on. Hey, I was wondering if you're going to have absinthe in the next uh, DVD uh, CD-ROM that you're putting out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, right, Mike. That's good. Free model of every day. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike's show. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say the reason why absinthe was bad for you back in the day, but is it now? They used to think it was wormwood that made it poisonous, but it used to be stored in copper kettles, and copper is extremely toxic. Listen, and I'm, that's not, what I'm not even buzzing. I'm I not... like that, though. I'm interested. In that. Yeah. Oh, you are? Well, no, was, I'm not. It was stored in copper kettles, and the copper made it poisonous. That's, right. that's correct. Oh, very cool. Well, that's there you go. neat factoid. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, hey what's up, Don and Mike? Yeah, you're talking to us. Hello. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Hey, Mike, have you been out in your boat lately? What's that? Have you been out on your boat lately? Yeah. Yeah, why? 
Well, I'm just wondering because I, I boat down there, and I, I wonder if you can single man water ski behind it like the grease man does. <laughs> yes. Hey, 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 on the SSO. Oh, we got to take a break. Hello. Good ship O. The good ship O. That's my show. In, in America. No, yeah, hi. Hello? I'm in America right well, now. Oh, well, you're on the air. <laughs> What's happening? You're well, the guy. Hey, call her. Are you there? Hello. Hey, Don. Mike. How hey. You doing? Okay. Hey, hey, Don. Don't worry about what. Uh, I don't worry. I don't worry about. Can I say, let you in on a secret? I don't worry about what any of you little brains think. You're all listening to the show. That's all I care about. And that's the exact point. Thank man. you. Uh, by the way, goodbye. We will be right back. This is the Don and Mike. Show. And by the way, take a call. Cape California. Hello. Hi, Larry. Uh, Hi. Don Imus. Uh, how you doing today? Love your radio show. Uh, can you tell me uh, what happened to Don and Mike and, and uh, New York City? If they're not on live anymore? Are they uh, back on? They were taken off for a while. Are they on or out, out of... Not on the air in New York, Don. Don and Mike? Yeah. You know, I don't know whether they're on or not. Well, Don I'm and Mike, Mike are on... They're on, in, they're on in Washington, right? Don and Mike. I think, I, I, think, I think that's where they originated from, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Las Vegas, hello. The Don and Mike Show. Now operating with a seven-day delay. The Don and Mike Show. Did you see him on uh, MSNBC last night? Who, Mike? Don Imus with his wife and child. Seen him on the Larry King show before. How you feeling, pal? I'm 